Welcome back to the Metropol Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. It is currently May 30th. It's 8.45 at night, give or take. Plus minus. How's everyone doing? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the VOD. Hopefully you're doing well. Wayne, hello. How's it going? How are you doing? Uh, we got some network tonight. We're going to be building some decks. We're going to be starting with the deck list of the week. Hopefully everyone's doing okay. We had, just last week, our... We had a game night camp. It was actually David from our meta. His first time organizing an event, which is awesome. I think that's a really cool thing to do, uh, to organize events. Obviously, everyone else uh, enjoys and participates. We had 10 players coming out, which is pretty great. Uh, it went well. I I think last week we played like a max deck. I think I got it down to 113 cards, and we brought that out, and it didn't drop a game. It went undefeated. So imagine the Netrunner DB posting. Uh, yo, Barcian Parten, sub dude, how's it going? Maybe Brian? I don't know how to pronounce that. Barcian, how's it going? Um, hey Maddie, how you doing? Welcome. Uh, it was a really fun tournament. I think 10 people coming up for a GNK is awesome. Our numbers so far in Montreal for like tournaments have been really good as of late, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's a lot better than it has like a year ago, which is actually pretty impressive considering obviously Fantasy Fight Games no longer supports this game but uh, some other people do, and that's been pretty cool. So we got some stuff today. I think we're gonna open up, I got like a list of decks that I wanna build. They're kind of some weird ideas. Nothing's like too hyper competitive anymore, at least on this channel. We're just kind of having fun. Cause I realize we haven't done enough of that. We have, we've been playing like some pretty reliable competitive stuff, but it's like GNK season. I think regionals are coming up sometime soon. Montreal I think is August, so we can goof around. Hey Blue, how's it going? Happy Thursday to you as well. How you doing? Uh, so to start with, this is the decklist of the week, yeah, it's a gif, you know whose it is, this is Code Marvelous Dan, uh, you can check out his channel, he does stream almost every weekday morning if I'm not mistaken, up on Code Marvelous on Twitch and YouTube. Um, I'm gonna open up this in Chrome because, you know, how the world works. Uh, and this is a 419 deck, so this was Sovereign Subways from my understanding, okay let's pull that music a bit down, huh? Um, it's like a team tournament that happened in New York City, um, I hope I'm right, that sounds about right. If anyone knows better. Uh, and this is a 419 deck. So I've been playing a fair bit of 419. Um, and I've been playing Security Nexus 419. And Dan talks about it a bit in the write up. And this isn't, this is just kind of like good stuff criminal uh, 419. Uh, and I'm excited to see how that plays. I think the big thing here is about econ denial. And you have all the tools that you'd have in most 419 deck lists. So you have the falsified credentials, or excuse me, the corporate grant, which is a really mean card. I actually like this card a fair bit, especially if you have cheap things to install. So we have things like pad tap. Um, I think the spice that makes this a Dan deck is cards like Hernando Cortez, which Dan absolutely loves. And I think this is a really good card against certain matchups for sure. If they have more money, you want to spend 11 credits to Resident Anansi. It's pretty good for you as a runner. Um, Pad Tap is a card that I think I don't really love so much. It's an econ card. It's cheap to install, which is really good with Corporate Grant. But uh, it's also more econ denial if you want it. And then uh, only multi-access here we have is the Turning Wheel because we're spending most of our influence on N'Golo. And this is a card that in the 419 decks that I've been playing, I usually find myself spending three or four influence either on N'Golo or on uh, Keyhole, or not whatever Keyhole is called now, Stargate, right? And I love Stargate. It's a really strong card that locks people down. It's a win condition on its own. It's extra multi-axis. It does a lot for you. Um, this is N'Golo though, which could be your only breaker. Um, we do already have Amakua, which has added support in 419. So whether we need boat, we'll find out. And I think this is actually really interesting. Yo, single paid, how's it going? Hooray, best part of the week. Glad you feel that way. Welcome to the stream. Also, Baza, hey, happy Thursday to you as well. Um, yeah, so Dan writes about this in his deck list, and he says as a one in way, uh, a way to spend one influence in a deck, you can do a lot worse than Rizeki, and I think he's totally right on that. Um, for what it's worth, this does take up an MU, and we only have 5 MU if we get our console down, and Angolo is 2 MU. I imagine there's a lot of matchups where you draw this too late for it to be good, or with Amaku and stuff like that, so this is really dependent. If you draw in the early game, it's probably good. Kokots, how's it going? Isn't Amina better than N'Golo if you play Criminals anyway? Um, yes and no. The thing with N'Golo is it's, it's literally a crazy card, right? Like, it contests servers so well. Like, uh, N'Golo plus Inside Job, you can get through three ice a lot of times. It's a really flexible card, lets you deal with typeless ice. And that's really strong. Um, in Faction, you have Amina, which is two credits more. And I honestly like Amina a lot better, especially if you want to go for Econ Denial. It depends, and also Amina is really well statted to deal with big code gates, stuff like Fairchild 2 and 3, it breaks relatively cheaply, and I think that's actually really valuable. Uh, this is also not bad at all, um, but you're going to end up spending like 3 credits for most code gates at least. 
So I don't know. The way that I've been playing it generally is I play Stargate and then I play Amina. Um, but this is an option. We're going to see how this goes. And is it also interesting? This deck has a single Citadel Sanctuary, which is a cool card. It's worth knowing that this tournament, uh, the Sovereign of the Subways, is a team tournament, tournament. So I think everyone on your team had to play a different faction. I'm making this up, by the way. I'm assuming that's how it goes. So having flexibility where this is good against tags and meat damage is probably worth putting a slot in your deck, even though we're not running any like power tap or... Uh, or uh, self-tagging cards. And then lastly, I think the interesting thing is this deck only runs two daily casts um, and it runs a no one home. Again, another flexible card and then hunting grounds, which I think is a pretty hot card. Uh, there's a fair bit of cards that have on encounter abilities that are pretty potent. Just put FC2 in archives once you see Amina. Yeah, how's it going, Jim? That's likely how it goes. But like the fact that you can make code gates really bad um, is really a really big, strong part of Amina. But seven credits might be a lot to put down. And this is not a tag me deck. I think the money actually in this deck is pretty weak. Uh, all we have is diversion and then two daily casts crowdfunding of course it's a restricted card but like there's not that much money in this deck so we'll see but i think we brought that install cost we don't need eight credits to place it uh, to uh do um a security nexus at least i scheduled weekly D, &D sessions later today and i somewhat regret it we'll be missing some of the stream ah oh, shit well hey you know what you can never be that sad about playing D, &D with i assume some friends so uh at least the vod will be around huh all right, let's give this one a go. Um, I think Dan also specifically said that this was an anti-rush deck, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm kind of interested in, like whether this list would be better off just playing Leela than 419. A lot of people do play the credit a turn, which keeps the Econ Denial up, and it's actually really relevant, especially because otherwise you're getting Amakua counters, a three of in the deck. But Leela seems really good right now. A lot of people are doing install advance advance. I feel like if we were Leela, we might want a bit more multi-axis to make sure if they jam for a remote, we can pressure essentials. Um, and so far, we only have a single leg work so we'll see how things go and we do have class act by the way and same old thing you don't see this card a lot same old thing is uh, it's pretty slow a lot of times i'd rather just play like a second leg work or whatever but um here we'll give it a shot i don't know how to spell ulysses oh luckily it's up there okay excuse me i hit the microphone how's everyone doing by the way Hopefully you're having your game night kits, stuff like that. Uh, I think it's European Nationals this weekend or next weekend off in the UK. Is that correct? I know Nisi has been talking a bit about it. True True D&D &D is going to be great. Hell yeah, it is. There were 15 games tonight when I logged on, so should be an active night. And after we play a couple games with this, we're going to be building some stuff. I have like a short list of things, <laughs> lame old thing. Uh, I have a short list of, uh, of ideas for decks that we want to build. Everything's a bit like out there, which I'm really excited about. So we're going to see how that goes. Yeah, the thing about same old thing, the value of same old thing dropped like really heavily over rotation and also even just like the revised core set or the system core dropped it. I think the biggest card that used to play was same old thing into account siphon just because account siphon was like that 15 to 10 credit swing, which was kind of crazy. But now like diversive diversion of funds isn't that good with same old thing. I'd argue one of the better things in this deck for same old things is actually falsified credentials because if you spend two clicks to know whether you have to run a remote, that can actually be worth it for sure. Um, otherwise, same old thing, it's embezzles really strong in a lot of matchups, but we don't have that. So I guess same old thing legwork is probably our best shot. Even same old thing stim hack is like reasonable. Oh, okay, it's a net damage deck, and we have really weak multi axis. So this is going to be a bit difficult. Thanks, you two. So we have no, like, we have no Caldera in faction. We do have a no one home, which is really cute. Uh, Hunting Grounds might work against Kamaidu. Maybe they're also running a uh, slot machine. I don't know. But Corporate Grand Diversion is pretty good. And then we have Falsified Credentials to be able to reveal ice. I think this hand's actually kind of worth keeping. We have a single special order, which we can grab an Amaku immediately. And we do have money, so we'll keep this. Louisville, Kentucky, U.S. Regionals this Saturday. Oh, shit. I don't know if you want to talk about it, Blue. Do you know what you're playing? What's it seem like in Louisville? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So this is actually really scary because in theory, we can pay a credit. We can force them to expose and it could be a psychic field and they can just like eat our entire hand. It is a psychic field. We can't die here, but this is really bad. <laughs> There's a chance that we shouldn't have done that because it's an optional ability, but we did just expose the psychic field. Okay, cool. So we spend the right amount of money. Streambot is watching. Make your bets. Hey, yeah, Streambot, if you don't know, is a robot that goes around and streams to a channel. All right, well, Psychic Field has zero red costs, res costs, and they're actually playing Housekeeping. So this is a grind. This card you don't see a lot of play, but the first time we install a card, they must trash a card from their grip. Uh, we do have a current as well. Um, 
Interestingly enough, uh, I think we just want to trash that and get down crowdfunding, which is infinite econ. At this credit level, also, they can't play snare or anything like that. So I think that's pretty hot. And they have psychic fields. It's going to be bad. Speaking of regionals, do you guys know when the Vancouver one's going to be? Corey, how's it going? Um, I have no idea. Maybe somebody in chat knows. Very fun in the Weaver. Lots of new and returning players. That's awesome. Um, we're going to keep their econ down. We don't really have to pressure this turn. I don't, I don't, next turn, they'll likely click for three credits. Fortunately, we're going to install the crowdfunding, so they're going to lose one. So we also want to make sure we don't install cards we don't need. So it's very, it's very, there's a big chance that we actually don't need to install this daily cast in this matchup because the five credits on it probably aren't that important. Uh, we run here. We can steal. We would take in damage. I don't want to do that right now because we have diversions in hand. So I think we're just going to keep drawing through. And this is probably not that meaningful in the matchup. I guess sometimes it will re remove the snare tag. But that's probably not worth the card in the two credits. Vancouver's still being scheduled, as far as I know. That's what Brick says. How's it going, Brick? So this is huge, because once a turn we're going to install things again, if we want to care about how many cards we have in our deck so we don't die, um, it might not be the best thing to install everything. But still, this will give some value. And we can expose this. There's only one ice that on expose is bad. It's a thimble rig. So I think we actually might want to just like special order for an Amakua. And then go for singles. We also know we can siphon through this if we really want to. We have no credits, which means we can't steal feed AI. So I think running here actually might be a mistake. We're just gonna keep it nice and slow. And we also have to watch out for crowdfundings because crowdfundings will draw through our deck. I don't think we like really need to, to go fast here. We could run HQ. I just don't want to hit feed AI and not be able to steal it because you need two credits for that. Now, this will give Amakua counters, so ideally we know it. That's an Aiki, which is three strength, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and they can res it. So we could go HQ here. Maybe it'll prompt a res, which will put them back credits, and they still can fire Snare, which is the best thing. And Geo front, that's really good. Trash that. We could install a card here. IPO, wow, okay. And we're going to play the turning wheel. That's perfect. And make sure that they can't... Um, well, it fires the corporate grant. And it's a card we definitely want in this matchup. When they have low credits, we can go for big multi-axis. Uh, we'll expose here, I guess. Under advancing it too. That's an NGO front. Okay, so we know what that is. So we can run the NGO front. We can actually falsify it, but we want that not for money. We want that for information. So we're not going to pop it here. They pre res it, which is good. Now, if they pop it, if they do pop it, uh, we can just go ahead and siphon them, which sounds about right. Yo, Shang, how's it going? Welcome. Wow. There's actually no reason to pop the NGO front. I don't think there's any ability that would have punished it. But now, if we click for credit, we can uh, diversion of funds them because we need one credit to get through this, and this cost one credit. Love the streams. Oh, thanks, Shang. And they're not even going to res. So this is because of the turning wheel counter. We're not going to get the install here, but this is going to make sure that they can't IGO, uh, NGO, IPO. And we could install the daily cast to make them lose one credit. But again, cards in our deck kind of matter. Uh, I think we just want to run HQ here because they can't fire a snare. There's some combination of things that we hit. I think like feed AI into double neural. But they have the credit neural neural and have all of that in hand. So there's the IPO that we're going to keep them off of. They have IPO in their deck. It means they're probably not like entirely horizontal. They might have some big ice in their deck. All right, so this is probably Moanza City Grid, which is really scary. It could also be Hokusai or Prysec. It's a Hokusai, which is fine. If they res that, it's two credits, and we trash it for four. So I think we want to pressure that. Falsified's the best card in their hand, for sure. Oh, we can't lose this. This one actually seems really important. I think we'll just play this and click for a credit. Yeah, if we lose this, it's really bad. It's our only decoder, and we don't want to lose net damage to lose our things. I listen on my commute every day. Oh, no way. That's cool. When we were doing card reviews, you probably should have made them at some point a podcast type format. I've only recently started getting into podcasts. I've been listening to a lot of Reply All. It's been really fun. Oh, shit. Okay, so now they have another housekeeping. So we don't really have a current to play here, but this is a. We want to access with four credits if we want to go ahead and trash this thing. So, we probably just want to install things. I don't know what we're drawing into. Stimac's not really playable in this matchup. We want to keep our hand size up. 
I think we'll just click for three, throw a card out, which feels bad. I think Stimhag might be our worst card. We can also run three times to get a crowdfunding back, but this is as what installs a card. He or she must trash one card from their grip. So even if we do that with crowdfunding, we have to trash a card. It's not an additional cost. Wayne, I just replayed all of Portal 2. How is it? Much I forgot how much I love GLaDOS. It's been a while since I played Portal 2. I remember it not being as cool as Portal 1. It was like a pretty all over the place. I remember the ending. The ending was really cool. All right, so we we need one to get through, four to trash this, that's five, and then we need two to steal fetal AI, so we could click two, run HQ. It gives us one click left to remove a tag from uh, from uh, turning wheel, and also having two cards left. This is going to be a slow game. But, like, they have an IPO'd here, so it's likely we're going to be able to trash this for free. Okay, so now this puts them away from the IPO, which is good. We lost the hunting grounds, that's fine. That's a sting. We steal that, take a damage. We lost the Citadel. We'll trash the Hokusai. And we also lost the Falsified, which is one of the better cards in our hand. I think we'll just draw up here. If you're throwing cards out anyways, maybe play Deuces? Um, we could. We could. Deuces is cool though. Eh, it's probably not that important. So they're clicking for three. I think we just smash HQ again. I think we'll play Deuces now. We also cleared the current, which is really important. So far they played two currents and what, like six influence and they've done nothing. We'll always draw first. We have a Rezeki, which is actually probably worth playing in this matchup. It makes Cortex Lock bad and also just gives us the drip money. This is like the infinite economy we want. I don't think we have to interact with them this turn. We didn't run two turns ago, so the chance of them like shipment from 10 inning out is pretty low. And honestly, there's a chance we don't want to install the crowdfunding because it's a really easy card to lose to damage and it's not bad if we lose it to damage. I think the same old thing's worth installing just because we have same old thing falsified. Deuces Wild also is really good as a burst draw card, which like this this matchup like attacks you on tempo. Like if they have Obakata, which they likely do, we have to draw three. And I guess it's hard to recover from Obakata because it wipes your whole hand a lot of times. But this is gonna be a long match. These are the sort of matchups where I love keyhole over in Golo, because you keyhole R and D, right? And then what do they do? They have to res the ice, and then you just trash all the ice or trap cards or like operations. And that's really bad. All right, if they pay the credit here, they go down to six. It's an Anansi, which we actually can break for three. We need four credits to get through here. I think we want them to res it. We have no de res effects, but if they're poor, they're poor. And if they're on punitive, there's a small chance they could be. We can't clear this snare tag. It depends what they res. We could even just pay three jack out. Like, do you res the Nazi now? I don't think you do because the Amakua has tokens. So we're just going to get a single here. It's an Obakata, which we can't steal. So we know what restricted card they're on. That's not really a surprise. We do get a turning wheel counter, and I think we'll just draw off once. We probably deuces out of this. Hernando would be cool now? Yeah, it would be, actually. Michael, how's it going? How are the matches today? This is our first one. Uh, it's been kind of slow so far. For what it's worth, we can also pay like what, two, four, seven to get through a Nancy, which isn't the worst. It's not the best. It's gonna be a slow matchup. Like, I don't, we're not really. Punitive housekeeping seems unlikely. There's a chance actually that they're just playing punitive and housekeeping, so they have like six Wayland cards. But that's three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That could only be twelve influence. Yeah, it's a one of though. And we're already at 25 cards of the stack, which is pretty bad. Like, I think a lot of times we're just going to click for credits and do nothing. That's kind of the problem is our multi-axis is pretty weak. Like, I think we just wait for them to push in the remote and we falsified it and run it or not. The thing is, like, they're probably running molds at more than one psychic field. Is this the deck in the front of Netrunner DB? How's it going, Bort? Yeah, it is. It's the deck list of the week. This is Code Marvelous's uh, 419 deck. But like they're just gonna safely click for credits. If we steal the Obakata, we take five damage. Uh, it actually might be even worth keeping uh, installing this thing so that we can dodge punitive if they do play it. They actually prevented this from being exposed, but it doesn't really matter because we have Angolo, and they have a lot of money. They might be on punitive. 
I've been learning the game with that deck. It's been fun. Oh, sweet. Yeah, this deck actually is probably really good for learning because it has a lot of like really straightforward good effects. Like, I don't know. I think we just run R&D for singles here, which really sucks. Like, they can res this. I guess we break this for four? That feels terrible. Yeah, we need to get Aramaku up, and I'm assuming there's Breach Domes in there. We can play a side game, though. Play with the creator today. Kick my butt. Who's the creator? We could have paid one there, but I'm assuming... Actually, we probably wanted to pay one there. Depends on whether we take damage. It's a preemptive. Okay, so this is going to be really slow. I imagine they're actually going to preemptive back their currents, if not uh, their... Um... Yeah, if they're in Geo, they're probably a Glacier deck. This is weird. We could check our guys. Seems pretty bad. I actually kind of like running this remote to some extent, just because it gets us... They have to res it, or we get Amaku Angolo counters. We have seven, which I think is good enough. So this will make it awkward for them. Creator of the deck. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Dan. We can also run here, just jack out over and over again to get turning wheel counters. Because I don't know if they're going to res the Nancy. They probably would. But, like, we're just going to be slow here. So, yep. It's a Kaku go. So we know what that is. That's fine. We can just jack out. Uh, so we made them spend four. We know there's an Obakata in hand, so it looks like I'm going to jam the Obakata behind the Kakugo. Uh, we need 9 credits to get through here, which we don't exactly have. Um, feels rough. I still think we'll pressure HQ. If they score the Obakata, honestly, it's probably fine. And we have 7 credits to get through this with the N'Golo. I just want to make sure my math is right. 2, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, it's exactly 7. We'll spend all our money on it, but so will they. And then we'll just click for credit. This might be wrong. Maybe we want to wait for them to be poor. Uh, actually, they can res this now, too. Be interested if they do res this. This sucks also because we could hit the Fetal AI. It is a Thimble Rig. So now they can reposition the Nancy, which seems good, or get the, the Kakugo there. But that was going to happen anyways. So we're just going to jack out here and take a credit. That might actually have been a pretty bad play. But we have no D-res effects. We have no inside job, anything like that. So those ice we're going to get res probably no matter what. Put them on very little money though if they want to jam. We have to watch out any turn that we run because in theory they could do Psychic Field into Neural. It's an NGO front. Okay. They should pre-res that immediately. Cool there. They're just using the money. Alright, well we probably do nothing and just click for credits. Like that's what sucks about this matchup is I I don't think we are, are it's worth us going for singles. I also don't see where our econs meant to come from. We could play pad tap. I don't think they would purge pad tap. But how many abilities do they have? They get money. They still have three sure gambles. They played all their NGO fronts. I don't think we do it yet. How's it going, Tataki? Yeah, it is black tree, and it's like a slow one. They only have eight credits. So we have no way to pressure. We want to siphon here. We might want to just run Archives to see if there's Breach Domes in it. I'm assuming there is. Yeah, just one. So we lost Falsified Credentials. Fuck, that's one of our best cards. We lost both of them to damage. Uh, and we saw what they threw out, which was a Breach Dome. Oh, the Psychic Field we knew. I don't think actually we gained any information there. We knew that was a Psychic Field and we paid better attention. This Rizaki is going to do good, though. Always kill Pad Tap. Kill it on sight? I think so. In this matchup, it might not be that important. I just don't think Pad Tap's going to fire this much because it's not like an economic ability. It's not like Polina, and they don't have like assets. So I think our game plan is steal an Obakata, then draw up. And now we can run R&D. Yeah, I think they should have purged there because they're going to be running R&D for sure. Oh, we have a hedge fund. Okay, and they're preemptiving. Fuck. Imagine the gall of defrauding an African nonprofit system that going public with the results. Psychic Field housekeeping, <laughs> fucking hell, Psychic, psychic Field's going to be rough. Okay, I'm going to play the gamble, whatever. We have to draw once, though, if we're going to run here first. Fuck. I don't know if this Corporate Grant's that good. It probably is. They just shuffled the housekeeping, though. I'd rather keep this to turn off housekeeping. Class Act is burst draw? I don't know if we really need that. And then we'll break two. The last two. 
So you can pay one to draw two. Honestly, you probably should. Oh, we have the Begalter, but we don't have the MU for it. Paragon will also be pretty solid. There's the housekeeping. Okay, so we know that we have a point of keeping this. And now we have to discard something, so I think we'll just play the pad tap. And throwing out the turning wheel is a bit risky. I actually kind of like to keep the turning wheel just because if they do trash this with a voter intimidation, it is all of our multi axis. So we're going to throw out this dim hack. Yo, Rob, how's it going? Welcome. How are you doing? How's your week been? Are we holding crowdfunding to hide it? We're just holding crowdfunding because like, I don't want to actually install too many crowdfundings because once you make three runs and you reinstall this, it draws cards, which can be kind of bad in this matchup. It grinds you out, but we could have. The thing is also like, this is technically net damage that's free. Like if we lose this card, we can reinstall it anyways if we want to. This could be second field. I think it's the Obakata. Wow, okay. They don't even, they prevented the expose. That's wild, what is that? Goddamn one in New York. Trees are going wild for it, it's all good. So what could that be? It could be a second sting, which is probably what it is. They want us to feed, we don't want to feed us a second sting. I think we'll check for sure. Yeah, we'll check, we can take the damage. Feels bad, likely a snare. Oh, it's a breach down. Oh fuck, we shouldn't have trashed that. That doesn't really matter. We didn't lose anything that important. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I think everything that they put in the remote is going to be advanceable. We should just trust our gut instinct. Like, there's nothing they're going to jam in the remote that doesn't need advancement counters besides a single Kakago. That was really stupid. That was a snare that was really bad for us. As soon as we install this pad tab, it's going to do nothing. Just you watch. Is it a May ability? You don't have to reinstall crowdfunding? No, you don't. But we could choose to. What's the plan for tonight? How's it going, Jester? Uh, we are going to build some custom, slightly janky decks. We have some cool ideas for decks that I think all of them are going to work to some extent. Uh, this is what the list looks like, so we're going to have like a nice little vote about that. I'll make that box bigger at some point, and then we'll do that after this. Yeah, I really don't think we should run the remote if they don't advance that card. Definitely should have drawn first if we're going to pay one for the E-key. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we shouldn't have drawn once. I did not plan that turn out. So again, this could be Psychic Field and we could lose right here. They could do Psychic Field into Neural. Yeah, I don't think we run this. Didn't you have a GNK or something you went to? Yeah, we took a 113 card max deck to a GNK. Uh, it didn't lose a game and I ended up going out of the whole tournament it was four rounds and we only lost one game all night or all day. So it went really well. It was, we went, yeah, it was the Corp that dropped the game. Man, uh, it was really good. It was really, really good. Oh, not all subroutines, sorry, just this side game. Anyone coming to Toronto next week? I don't know, actually, no. Um, I'm going to be gone for E3, so I'm not going to be around. There's a chance some people are going. I, I'm just not in that conversation. IPO. Oh, bad tap's getting good. We could do a dig deep with the turning wheel. Um, but not a lot going on here. So we have two siphons in the deck, which would be okay. Maddie has her coffee. Yeah, Maddie took the game off of me. Uh, the last game. I almost went undefeated that day. It came so close. Uh, I think we're just going to click for three. Like, we do, really don't have a lot of reason to do anything. If you install Class Act, then dig next turn. That's a good idea that we could install this just to burst draw. And then we could dig super deep. Really? They conditioned us. That's just a house and eyes. <laughs> we lost the Class Act. Feels bad. Okay, so their agenda suite isn't just like five threes and three ones. They're running a mixed bag, so it's going to be hard to play around that. Uh, okay. And they have the current in hand, so I don't want to play this. Yeah, okay, so we have one more class act. And if we run for singles, they just start pinging us. Whatever. If we draw here, they have a chance to hit the cards we draw. So if they hit a diversion... So we can play a corporate grant just to bait out a corporate grant. Let's see if they hit us with this. Yeah, they're gonna hit us for one. Oh, we lost a corporate grant. Okay, so that makes that easier. It's a hedge fund. All right, so we're gonna throw cards out. I feel like the pad tab is gonna give us more money in the long run than sure gamble. 
Uh, we can run HQ. We know that they have a Philotic in there. It's going to cost us four credits. We know they have a hedge fund and an IPO, so this actually seems okay and whatever. Yoy. I don't like any matchup where we're not incentivized to run. I think we just want to get something big off the top of R&D, and then we can win off the Obakata and HQ. For what it's worth, too, they also definitely should put the Kakugo in R&D. They should definitely do something with the Thimble Rig. Yeah, this is Code's uh, 419. This is Dan's 419. Yeah. Yeah, the thing also with the other version, like the, the what's it called, the Citadel versions, every time we're just going to die here to a uh, second field, uh, is that they do have the money. Oh, it is an Obakata. Okay, cool. So I think we just go and steal that. I think we just steal that. We draw one, steal it, and then draw two. Our hand doesn't matter that much. And then we die to what, single punitive? Oh, we need to draw twice, run it, draw once. So we died to single punitive. So what do we do here? Yeah, yeah, House of Knives, yeah. So we're going to take five damage plus the House of Knives. Plus the Kaku, and then we draw one, so we die to a single punitive. Seems strange they expose Obakata? Yeah, kind of. It means they probably have punitive or something like that. And we'll just draw once. F drawing once means that we can uh, avoid Psychic. I mean, uh, Neural. But we either die to double Neural, we send a lot of the cards, uh, or to credit, like Hedge Fund uh, Punitive. So we probably shouldn't have run for that. But at least now we're on game point, and we can win off of multi axis But we only have like 12 cards left. Run Anki to draw? It's a bit risky. It's a, it's more risky, and like two cards doesn't change much unless they have double Neural. We've seen a lot of what have they drawn. Uh, we can expose this, because Psychic Field for one? Oh, I guess Psychic Field for one. Oh, it's an Obakata. Wait, so do we have a deuces left? Deuces, deuces. What's the chance we can steal this? If we draw deuces, it's not unlikely. All right, so if we hit them for five, they go down to two, so they can't score. So we could do a diversion here just so they can't score, and it buys us another turn. I think that's probably right. Yeah, that's definitely right. It's just locked on a table. Is there a downside to using 419's ability? Only with a single card in the game, which is Psychic Field, which says if the runner exposes it, you can do a net damage per every card in their hand. And we hit that click one. They install it first click. Uh, so that is the only reason. All right, so now they can't really score it. And then it gives us another turn to draw into a deuce as wild. Praise Big Turtle, yeah, right? The only breaker we need is Turtle and N'Golo. That's kind of the strength of N'Golo. It like, helps with the Turtle problems. All right, so we need uh, f actually four, five, six cards. So we basically, I think, have to draw the deuces here, and even that might, might, might not be enough. But if they score this to go down to two credits, and then we can big dig and not worry about snare. So I don't think it's going to go bad for us no matter what. Oh, wait, we, ha we, we have it. Do we not? Okay. So if we draw here, we need four or five. We're one card short. No, we're one card short. Because we don't have to worry about the PE damage because we win. But this is one, this is four, which is five, and this is six. So uh, we, can't, we can't stop them. Draw three, play deuces, and run. Oh, fuck. Because we could have done that last click. Yeah, you're 100% right. Because we could have run with the deuces. Yeah, we didn't need the credits. Yeah, yeah, 100% we could have won. We, we fucked that up real bad. I, I played uh, that as soon as I as I uh, drew it, which is not right. Because, yeah, we could have done that last click to draw with it and run at the same time. Yeah, okay. That's fine. I think we'll be okay because if they score this, we'll take one net damage, but then they'll go to a few cards and we can probably win off of R&D. If that's the case, we're just going to click for two. Yeah, that's definitely a misplay. 100% we, we would have won on the spot. So, okay. Well, we know that. Actually, can we play deuces if we can't expose an ice? Because they have no ice to expose. Can you use deuces to expose an ice and make a run? Maybe we actually couldn't have done that. I think you need an ice to be able to expose. Oh, you still can? 
Okay, so that does one damage. So we're going to draw two. Run R and D. Yeah, we'll run R and D here, and we'll draw actually. If this misses, that's really bad. Why not Aiki draw? It's not. It's conditional. And if it fails, we fuck it up. But we could have ran this. Okay, so this needs to hit. As soon as we install these bad taps, they become useless. So we know there's Obakatas in there. It's a Hokusai grid. It's better that they draw that than something else. Actually, nah, fuck it. So we might need to steal double fetal, so I'm not gonna trash this. Sting, okay. So we just need a two pointer. Kakago. Envelope. Okay. We have one click left. Uh, we have another diversion, which is pretty sweet. I feel like putting the Paragon down is not bad at all. Because otherwise we have to discard something. Paragon seems like it's going to get us more money than anything else. Expose isn't in condition. Making a run still counts as changing board state. It does, but the way that it's phrased makes me think. It says expose an ice, then make a run. And I feel like you can't do that. But I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Also, how's it going, Argentina? You could also have used the same old thing diversion to buy another turn. Oh, that's totally true. Yeah, same old thing diversion was a fine play. I forgot we have same old thing on the table. Man, we're really fucking this up. I gotta do a better job at like sitting back and like observing the board state. That happens a lot when I'm talking. Yeah, we could have held them back for sure. So they're drawing a Hokusai off the top. They don't have a lot of money. They have three clicks. And I think we know the next cards. It's Hokusai into Kakago into Envelope. We lost another falsified and a no one home. No one home is actually pretty good. Then is what allows you to make a run with deuces even if you can't expose it. Yeah, otherwise it would be like if, right? Okay, so they just purged. Uh, don't know how good that is right now. Um, but we really don't have to do much. I think we just want to click for credits at this point. Because they don't really can't do much. We need eight credits to hit the diversion, nine to hit the diversion. So we can do that next turn if they click for three. The problem is like we're not buying anything here. Because then we just run R&D again. We're going to wait. So they just drew a Hokusai. Now going to draw Kakago. Kakago is the biggest issue. They put Kakago in R&D. We do nothing besides camp the remote, which really sucks. Follows rights. Can the runner select the fourth option? Yes. The effect is separate from. Okay, cool. They can barely even afford to install ice. Yeah, they really can. Credit, credit. That's a Hokusai. So like it just comes to how many cards and like we install these pad taps which are useless. But again, we could have definitely won if we played it smarty. And they actually paid a credit to prevent that? We know what that is. Okay. Whatever. So they drew a Kakago, next is envelope, then it's clear. So on our turn, we basically just want to diversion and then start running this so they can't res it. There also is a chance that there's an agenda in archives. Maybe like a, a future perfect, something like that, but I don't know. Man, if you had turntable, this deck would be falling apart a bit it's just like threes and ones it looks like yeah we're just gonna, that's the problem is like we're not encouraged to interact in this matchup paint to prevent turtle counter they could but it like really doesn't matter that much like we're gonna get through Aiki anyways with angolo and it doesn't matter for anansi into this server like you're right they could pay for it but like at this point in the game they're kind of i don't know maybe we same old thing legwork actually Because at this point, we haven't seen any fast advance, but they could easily be on a shipment from Tenon, right? And then they would just like shipment from Tenon out. Like a, There's probably a Flotic in the deck, which is the thing we want to hit. And also the last Sting is pretty rough. Yeah, the Sting is going to be really rough. But yeah, I think cards is going to be the biggest issue here. It's cool that we got Paragon down. I think our last card in our stack is also the last Paragon. Oh no, we lost a while ago. Never mind. How's it going, Apathy? It's going okay. Um, it's going all right. We, uh, we, we've been goofing some stuff up today. We could have won this match, but we're just beginning of the night. We're going to build some stuff. How have you been? Hey, Birdis. How's it going? Does Grid prevent turtles? I thought you had to uh, access the card. Uh, Hokusai Grid, if we trash it, we won't get a turtle counter because we made a run and we trashed the card. I feel like at this point we might actually want to run AK just to pay four to get turtle counters. It's going to be jank. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be cool. For what it's worth, actually, chat, we can ask about this. So these are the ideas. I can't actually blow this up. Can you read this? 
Credit, credit. Okay. And hedge fund. Ooh, our pad tabs gave us money. So I think the diversion of funds is probably not worth it until they push, just because it's a card for us. Just switched over to Twitch. Welcome. Really want to do Embolus Quest? Rob, you picked the probably the most boring one. That's the most like standard good one. I've been great. I just recorded commentary for my on stream match from SOS. I'll give you a shout at the end. If you check it out when you have time to go, yeah, totally. I pay the price when the next House of Knights gets 10 in doubt. Then I will. So I don't know what we do here. I think we just click for four. We can run R&D actually, like running our HQ is not that bad. We pay eight, which is half our money. If we, we haven't seen a snare yet, which is the biggest issue. If we hit a snare, we basically lose. It depends where the last Obakata is. But if we hit a snare, we really can't hit a last snare. No one home would have been pretty sweet, but we did lose it to damage. So it's less boring when you endless quest out of NBN. Yeah, I guess so. Same old thing, legwork isn't bad. How's it going, Bushi? It is not, but we just haven't seen any snares yet. And I'm worried about that. Where do you post your commentary? I'm new. I'm looking for Neverwinter vids. Turn pick Raven Slot Machine. <laughs> What is M Bullis Quest? Those are two cards that uh, we want to put together in the same deck because they're really good. A daily Quest and M Bullis, which is one of the Magnum Opus cards. No matter what, I think when we run, we draw first just to play around. Also, the top of our ID is clear now, but like Hokusai is a fuck off. Okay, if this is Psychic Field, we lose. Yeah, it is. So we lost right here, because we can't run. If the Psychic Field fires, we have one run. So we have to win the side game. How's it going, Parallel? Yeah, this is really bad. Uh, if we lose the side game, we lose the whole game. Quest complete is a counter to Ambulos? Uh, Yeah, it is. I don't think, I think two is right. Oh, fucking hell. Okay. <laughs> we got a tarot counter, count it. They're not going to pick zero? Oh, Dutake, I don't know about that. I don't do kind of thing. I wound up at table one of the tournament two weeks ago. Obviously two. I thought two is correct. All right, they drew next. They put that psychic field back in their deck, which makes me think there might only be one of them. Okay, so that there's obviously a thing. So if we diversion them, they go down to three credits, which means that they can still res the Hokusai, which would be an issue. So I think as in another turn, we just click for credits. We really have no reason to interact with them and money's not going to matter. So like all we do is wait for them to install an agenda. We do like same old thing into Falsify to see what it is and then decide whether or not we run it. It's just such a big problem, this Hokusai, because we run R&D and then we take damage and then we're on four cards, let alone if we hit a snare, then we're out of the game. I thought two is correct and click zero. That's like the this, this standard streamer thing is like you, you pick one thing and then you do the other one. So no matter what, like you're kind of uh, playing it safe. Because if it was two, I'd be like, yeah, we knew it was two. <laughs> Check the remote. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I like playing decks way more that have a way to close the game out as opposed to waiting because this happens a fair bit. And if we had a, like a Stargate in this deck, I think we could have closed the game a long time ago. Because now it's on the whim of like how R&D works. And if they don't do anything, we can't accelerate the game. Oh, second Psychic Field, let's go. Ooh, what is it? Oh, Pat Tap. Uh, do we falsify what this is? I think we might want to. It's really shitty, because no matter what, it's really bad for us. The money doesn't matter so much. It's a house of knives, which we largely have to steal. We also have 32 credits suddenly. Alright, we have to steal that. That puts us on game point. If we don't steal it, we take too much damage. This sucks. How's it going, Cowbird? We are recording audio for one of the SOS games, and when we were done, we spent like 1.5 minutes talking about what a class act on is. <laughs> Cheers, how did that come up? Um, okay, so we can spend two, three damage here, which puts us on uh, four damage. 
So then we have to win off of R&D and we can't hit Snare. We're fucked anyways. We're just going to be ground out. No, we're going to go for it. If not, we're taking four damage anyways. Because they're going to score it plus other four. It might as well put us on game point. Falsified should let you name the card for double credits. I would be in on that. Oh, why am I saying let the fire? So now we have to win off a single. We can't steal the five three. Luckily, we still on a we win on a one pointer. They might as well do the house of knives. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, paragon. Ooh, class act. Uh, yeah, we'll put it at the bottom. So we died a double narrow. We might as well draw here. Whatever. Okay, so we can't steal Obakata. We can still steal Fetal. Because uh, we'll win before the PE damage will happen. If we run R&D, basically we can see one card. We died a snare. So this is like almost super random. We still haven't seen a single snare. So the question is, do we run our HQ? Which could be full snares because we haven't seen any. Or do we run R&D? It's just, I don't know. It's kind of random. For what's worth, HQ seems a bit better because we, uh, well, they purged. HQ seems a bit better just because it's been a couple turns. We know there's an envelope, a Kakago in there, and a current. They might have thrown some of that stuff out. And money doesn't really matter. Uh, I think it's more likely that we run HQ. Because I think they've been on the back foot for sure. And we know Hokusai is here for sure, so that we're going to get damaged. Let's not break a sub <laughs> And if we don't, we get turning one counters, which is good. They 100% should put the Kakugos on centrals, because we're going to win on centrals. Preemptive, okay. So we can't really run again. Um, well, we could, but we actually probably want to run now. Like, they can res the Hokusai, sure. I think we're just going to risk it now, right? Like, we can see two cards, whatever. They can res the Hokusai, we can trash it. The side game doesn't really matter. If we're going to then check the bin, we usually die when that happens. Oh, fuck. We're going to do that. So we knew that was there. Whatever. Feel the eye. Oh, we die. Oops. All right. <laughs> we died. One card short. Just one card short. That was one pad tap short. So we accelerated a bit too fast. And we didn't even play our daily uh, gambles. We didn't even play the hedge fund. I thought I lost there too. Yeah, it's just one card off. Damn. Yeah. I actually misread the screen. <laughs> uh, we'll see what the next one is. Border control. Oh, wow. That's super interesting. Border control with Kakugo is pretty cool. So, yeah, we just need one more card. What was in archives? G2. Yeah. Oh, apparently there was something in archives. One Kronos. Ooh. So the game winning agenda is actually in archives, but that's a big of a risk, right? Because if it isn't, we lose on the spot. So generally, if that doesn't work out, we run archives. Um, yeah. So I think we just have to install less things, like just play it slower, which is unfortunate. Like just click for more credits, draw less. Uh, we also did 100% fuck it up. There was a turn where we could have ran this with the with the ex with additional run off of um, deuces. So that should have been our game for sure. Flotic in hand. Ooh. I hadn't seen a snare. They in there? We've also dodged two psychic fields for 419, which is pretty funny. But yeah, I feel like a lot of these matchups, like you could 100% run, uh, what's it called? Which I don't like, Caldera, but I think I, I like multi axes that lets you deal with the game. I, I'm generally always keyhole over Angolo. No snares. That's super weird. That's super weird. That's wild. That's wild. For what it's worth, also installing the No One Home, which we drew on a burst turn, this would have helped us a fair bit because we could dodge uh, the scoring damage off of something. I don't know what. Felt too expensive. Cool. Huh. I think what's expensive about their deck when it felt too expensive is probably these currents. These currents are really expensive. Let's make a deck. Let's do crazy things. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do some stuff. Oh, that was... 
This is the index we bullied him into dropping the caldera and just winning first. How do you win though against that damage? Like it, it seems kind of random. Like you don't have uh, any cool like filtered hushuk or anything like that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right, this is not big enough. I, I, can you read this? Is this legible? Maybe if your bit the bit rate is not good enough. Okay, hold on. hold on. WordPad, that's the better one. Okay, check this out. Okay, so we have some good ideas for decks. I just want to talk about what they are. Wow, this is a professional streaming setup. Um, that is not legible. Okay, cool. So these are the ideas of decks that we could do. Um, this is what we got. Okay, so I just want to talk about them before maybe you submit your official votes. So HP Custom Biotics, this is a deck that I've been kind of sitting on for a while where you can actually make a pretty good fast advance custom biotics deck. So that's a thing. So we could do that. HB Foundry Grail. So Grail is cool. Um, Foundry is underrepresented. So we could do that. Let's just change the lights. That's a bit better. Um, this actually, this deck got pretty interesting. So we play the twins, which is cool because you can feed gray ice, which is pretty cool. And on top of that, we also have like Helheim servers, which is actually kind of cool with Grail. It basically says the first time when you res ice, its strength goes up plus two, which can be kind of cool. Um, MBN Troll Trace involves this current that says the runner has to boost for traces before you do during a run, which is actually pretty cool. And so if you run cards like Troll and then cards like Heinlein Grid, you basically put them in this weird spot where they either have to end the run or lose all their money, which is kind of really, really strong. Um, this is a Builder of Nations grind deck, which I think it's just basically like a hundred cuts, but in Wayland, which seems kind of fun. This is probably the best target we have for reverse infection off of a sandstone, but we also have cards like Fractal Threat Matrix and Kakugo, so it's probably pretty good. Uh, and lastly, in either Jinteki or NBN, we want to do Embolus, which is like a cool upgrade that's kind of really expensive, but it can be on top of a daily quest, uh, which is really cool. Um, so that can be a pretty big deal. So these are all the options if you want to talk about it a bit and then we can try and build this deck. We might even have time for two of them. We'll see how things go, but I'd love to hear what y'all think. Jason, how's it going? Housekeeper is cheaper than losing to Corporate Grant. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but at that point, like there's some other cool cards. Like for zero, you can play a card that says the corpse hand size is reduced by one, which is zero and neutral and also really good for that sort of deck. So that's the way I see it. How's it going, by the way? 99 cards, BON? No, nah, it'd probably be 44. That might be wrong though. The trace deck sounds like the most fun. The trace deck sounds like the most uh, devilish, at least. Gullet, also, what's up? I love the Builder Nation's Foundry. Excellent. Fractal Threat Matrix. Yeah, Fractal Threat Matrix gets some love. I vote Foundry Grail, but Troll Trace is interesting too. I'm going to step out for a minute. What's the document about? Oh, these are the decks. We're going to build one of these at least, maybe two. So, based off of what chat. Uh, can you do a poll on stream? I maybe can. But the problem is, like, if you're watching this on mobile, it's not really. A good thing to do. Okay, here we go. What deck should we try and build? Okay. Oh, cool. I need. I don't care. I don't care. Cripple. Is this my list? Okay, here we go. Chat. We're doing the democratic process live. Three Aryabata, three Macrophage for the Troll Trace. I don't even think this deck does Aryabata. Is Director Haas in a CB deck? No, honestly, she's not, but that's an interesting idea. So how's it going, Niganen? Welcome. I wish I could vote for Moto. I'm actually most interested in the Troll Trace, I'll be honest. But I don't think the Troll deck runs Aryabata. Maybe it does. We'll figure it out. I also don't even know if it's making news. It probably isn't. All right, how do I, democracy in action, it's that quickly. We can we can organize and uh, take to the streets. They can't lose a click to troll, but that's the reason why you run this. So the choice is on them. It's either lose a click to the troll or lose all your money. Or sorry, it's either end the run or lose all your money. The troll deck shouldn't run Arya about it, but it should be fun when it works. I feel that. Does it run eavesdrop too? That was interesting. There was a really cool deck we played a while ago that ran three eavesdropping with Thimble Rig, and that deck was stupid good. That deck was like really good. I feel like we might want to put Thimble Rig eavesdrop in that deck. Not with the Heineken Grid. 
Yeah, I don't know. Have you ever seen eavesdrop with uh with thimble rig? Because they pass thimble rig so they can put it back. So they just every ice is a thimble rig, which is basically a trace three take a tag, which is really gross. I think we should give ourselves permission to just never beat a pad tap deck ever. Power tap. Oh yeah, we'll 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 be fucked. Uh, it's honestly not the worst though. It's probably not the worst. How's democracy going? Just totally put a big rig in it. What's that? Yeah, it's basically we have enough. To, if we have alternate win conditions, enough of them we win. Okay, I'm gonna call this in about thirty seconds. You drop with thimble is also bad, but funny when it works. I don't actually think it's bad. Uh, we played it in like Mati, I think, and we could position it. We had that, but we also had another card that had a cool on encounter ability. There's another condition card. I forget what one it is, but it was honestly like pretty good. It had, like had ridiculous servers. What do we else have on it? We had something else. Sub boost? I don't know. We had a huge thimble rig. What's the ID? Making news? Uh, I honestly don't know. I think it's the least important. I feel like Asmari might just be better than making news because two credits is better than two trace credits. Yeah, Rover Algorithm is the card we're talking about. Oh, wait, no, that's not. It was Rover Algorithm? Yeah, it was Rover Algorithm. Yeah, so the thimble rig gets huge. Okay, uh, we're calling it a democracy. Does this work? Okay, cool. All right. All right, let's do it. Let's build a deck. Okay. This deck is going to be hard to build because it's pretty convoluted, but it's going to be cool. Oh, we're doing a sealed league. I'm not going to show you what this is because they're watching. Um, this is a corp deck. So I'm assuming it's going to be an NBN deck, which I think makes the most sense. Uh, Acme Consulting uh, has actually some pretty cool traces. I'm looking at you only specifically IP block, but it's actually pretty good in any faction. Uh, there's also a big chance that Soul might be a good thing to do because we can ensure that our current is on all the time. New Angel Soul, which is actually pretty good. Um, Sync is mediocre. I don't know if Sync is actually that good in this because like the tags, like if you don't clear the tags, I guess it's cool, but short deck we can do with Asmari though. Asmari is also short deck. Sink a short deck, but is Mari short deck plus money, and that's better. Spend all influence on high profile targets and uh, uh, hard hitting news. How's it going, Winnegon? If we're doing that, though, that's probably just like a, a pretty boring NBN deck. We have to go as far away from that as possible. Okay, so let's get the key pieces in here first and then build off of that. So this is Troll from the source, um, which is a card that's interesting. It technically has no subroutines, but it has a pretty cool on encounter effect. Uh, again, and all encounter effects are strong. It says trace two success of the runner must lose a click or end the run. Now the idea is we have to play this card that I don't know the name of, and I'm hoping this works. No, that's not it. What's the name of the card that this deck hinges on? What's the name of that current? Don't worry, we're going to read all of them and we'll find it. Are we going to see net quarantine? Very unlikely. Surveillance sleep, thank you. That's it. Where is it? Oh, here she is. Okay, so this is Surveillance Sweep. It says a runner must spend credits first for each trace during a run, which is kind of cool. Um, that's very well medium blitz. Uh, so that's actually pretty cool because now when they hit the troll, they have to do their trace first, which is interesting, right? That's kind of cool uh, because then we can say, okay, wow, they spent three. So we only have to spend three and no matter what's going to happen. And losing a click isn't that bad, uh, but we're going to make it bad by playing Helheim servers. No, Heinlein servers. That was close. Uh, we can play three of this. So if they lose a click, they lose all their money, which would be pretty good. If we want to do a surveillance sweep deck, should we be sold? There's a chance. There's a chance we won't be sold. Um, how's that work with power tap? How's it going, Chris? Poorly. We're making weird shit. We don't have to worry about power tap. I haven't seen power tap in a while. If I see power tap today, I'll be upset. Um, other cards we can play because we want to play more. We want to play things that are both trace and things that lose a click. So we'll, we'll swing into that. We have Rutherford Grid, which is on its own, not the worst. Uh, it makes it the traces good, and this is particularly good on stuff that traces that doesn't care about like subroutines. So with subroutines, it's kind of rough. Um, but off of subroutines. Um, does power tap pay before runner pays or after? It, it's when the trace fires, so before. Yeah, before. Can't play two grids? Uh, fuck. Okay, well, we don't need to play that card. Is it better? No. Mm, no. 
Mm, this is what the deck does. Okay. What other traces lose a click? I feel like there's a couple. What other cards say lose a click? Enigma is definitely not a bad card. We're going to play that for sure. Uh, lose a... And I don't know how to spell click on this thing. That, that doesn't work. The runner loses a click. What? How does that not work? Isn't that what a, it says? Oh, Viper rotated, unfortunately. But Viper is a really good candidate for this deck. Viper would have been so sweet. Mason Bellamy, I think it's like 300 influence. Yeah, it's too much. It's spelled <laughs> click. Uh, what is that? What's the text on Enigma say? The runner loses. Oh, it doesn't say uh? Okay, this is. How do we stop? Yeah, Tapestry would have been good. Okay, well, that sucks. I don't know how this works. I'm pretty sure there's another one that says lose a click of Able on a trace. It's like. You know, Sherlock 2.0. If I say Quinda fast enough, you think I'll trick him into including it? <sighs> no. That's only also during a run, mind you, so that matters. Night Dancer? It doesn't. How's it going, Zach? Night Dancer says we gain a click. Oh, wait, what? It's both? This is the best card ever printed. Ronald 5? Oh, that's convoluted, too. But Highline Grid's only a run on the server, so it doesn't really make sense unless you protect that. Okay, let's do all the other stuff. Uh, so we want to put Thimble Rig in the deck. Three might be too much, but we also want to play the other thing in it. Oh god, we've gone far off the tracks here. We also want to play... Uh, oh boy. All these cards I've, I've, I've barely played before, so the name's Eavesdrop. That's bad. Let's get money in here, just because like that's obviously going to be an issue. Uh, IPOs. Uh, also... Because we're playing Surveillance Sweep, Ash is actually not that bad because I have to do the Trace first and then that's cool for us. It's really good. Let's just jam the Embolus Daily Quest in this. Yikes. Um, hey, HA over Algorithm. Oh yeah, we might do Rover Algorithm thing. How late am I? Not that late. How's it going, LES? We're just building first deck. No, I get it. There's lots of reasons why Quinta doesn't fit. It's bad. Yeah, you, you tried. I actually want to build a Quinta deck because I think Quinta is actually interesting. Um, okay, let's go for the agenda suite just here for a second. So we as Mario, we can play 44 cards and what actually makes sense for the deck. Hand size doesn't matter. Remastered edition doesn't really matter. We might want to just do five threes on the basis that we can run like six agendas and that's pretty elegant for the deck. Otherwise, like quantum predictive model is pretty good when we have the thimble rig uh, plus eavesdrop garbage because that's really annoying. Archive for current is not bad. We can also play soul at the last minute if we want to. Yeah, I think we're just advancing agendas, right? So we probably do want five threes. Improved Tracers is like okay, but this is Tracer strength of each subroutine, so that actually doesn't work, unfortunately, with Surveillance Swipe or Troll. That's fucking wild. Conundrum does have a lose. That's the one I was thinking of. Conundrum, yeah. Yeah, the other one doesn't, right? What's the middle conundrum called? This is off the 300 credits. Oh, no. No. Just putting it out there, but we haven't done a Unicorn and Bioethics plus Reeducation as a kill as long as we're starting to turn with five advancements on it. Uh. Crowbird, if we were going to do that, I think the thing that you want to do is kill switch with re-education, which, which is a kill. But that's a lot of influence. Quandry Enigma Conundrum. Oh yeah, I thought Conundrum for some reason was associated with that that virus one. You're right though. Macrophage, that's the one. I thought this loses a click too. Yeah, yeah, I, I got this confused with the, with the other one. This is cool. Trace one end to run on a seven strength is interesting. It's gonna just cost us. I think we'll play one of these just to see what happens. <laughs> just see what happens. Um, okay, let's get some other things. IP block is cool if they have to trace first. That's not what we wanted. Uh, wait, wait a second. Is this the best card? Because they might be tagged if they keep going through. Uh, let's get our agenda suite though before we get away with this. So I think NGO uh, SSL endorsement is probably just good. And then we have to play another three pointer. We don't have a lot of options. Like, um, Puppet Master is hot trash. Uh, Degree Mail is okay. And then Remastered. What's the other one? Reeducation is also hot garbage. Okay, whatever. Boring. They have to spin first, though. Trace one is pretty great. It's not the worst. It's not the worst. Okay, so how bad is this deck? Uh,. It's not the worst. Let's get some more ice in here. So let's get ice that traces, but traces almost unconditionally. So what ice traces almost unconditionally? So we don't have to worry about stuff. 
a waiver is a cool card. I don't think we're going to play it. Um, there's not that many. How many traces happen outside? Thoth is on encounter, right? Oh, that's when the run encounters give them a tag. So that's a bit different. It's also pretty expensive. This card's probably not the worst. Uh, what trace is unconditional? Information overload? Yeah, that's the one. How good is giving one tag? Let's put all the Arya Bada's three phage and go fully operational. Three macrophage Arya Bada? Arya Bada macrophage. Yeah, but then we would want to play the other one. Like, we could do this. Is that better than door to door? Intake force connection. Oh, those are interesting. Let's just let IP block fire now as it is. You can search Exelusis click. That didn't work. I don't know how to search click. I think that's the biggest issue. That didn't work. How's it go, by the way, Jeff? I think I'm doing something wrong, whatever. What does unconditional trace mean? Like trace that's not attached to a subroutine, right? Cause like, it's so easy to put traces in, but this is like on encounter trace, stuff like that. There's no way it's actually click like that. Am I falling for something here? No, I'm not. I, I, I did for a second. Okay, so we could do the Arya Bada thing for sure. Yeah, fuck it. Okay, let's do something weirder. Obviously money is good, but making news is interesting. The thimble rig server is not that good though, because now the thimble rig plus surveillance sweep is kind of bad on the basis that, uh, oh, this is convoluted as shit. Um, Chase <laughs> outside of Severdeen. Amani? Uh, Amani is interesting, but Amani is often, sometimes not during a run. Okay, we've, okay, we've lost the plot. I feel like we can't do NBN and Aryabada on the basis that this is meant to be a glacier deck of some sort with the Ash Highland. So we this is too far. We're gonna pull this one back. This one we were we were getting out of control here. So okay, we're back on track. Let relatively. Uh we still need some ice and we probably need a fair bit more money and we need to spend two more influence. I think actually probably like an archive memories is fine. I don't know. Uh we also could run things like what? We have Rover, which is cute. Host has plus one strength for each power count of rover algorithm. Um, which is really cool some stuff. I was totally unconvinced of Ash anyways. <laughs> Can this fit a Surveyor? Oh wow, Surveyor is actually... <laughs> surveyor doesn't get that much value from Surveillance Sweep because generally you can't let a big trace fire, but that's kind of the idea. The problem is like I hope that our Thimble Rig is more annoying than Surveyor. Add a daily quest on an Embolus. God damn it. The daily quest is actually a good idea though. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 ice and 3 of them are like really weak. So we're just gonna add some more eyes. Six HB for free Jeeves. I don't think we're gonna use it, let alone protect it. Card slots too, huh? I think we just want some ice. This is gonna be really bad. Small traces are much more impactful if you have surveillance sweep out. Yeah, I believe so. That's why I like troll better. But we just need stuff that ends the run a lot because our ice suite is like way shit. Assassin, how's it going, Maui? The thing with assassins, like any ice like that that's really expensive, like people just break the assassin. They almost never let the traces fire. And even if they let the traces fire, they generally let the traces fire on this. Like no one's going to boost and not take three net damage unless it's lethal. So I don't think it's a good uh, inclusion. But cards like, I don't know, the other ones that are really annoying, like Resistor, they pay first if they are breaking it. And that's kind of cool because then you can just pay one more than them if you really care to. That's, I think, the idea at least, but I wouldn't put Resistor in this deck. Checkpoint? Oh, checkpoint's terrible though because you give bad pub, which is like the worst thing you can do for a trace deck. One of the worst things, right? Let's just get some good ice. Data Raven often ends a run. Yeah, Data Raven's not that bad. And Data Raven with Surveillance Sweep is actually pretty, uh, uh, is a cool combo because generally they trace through that. That's actually pretty annoying. Echo Chamber for seventh point. Yeah, we're not going to consider how we win in this deck. <laughs> oh boy we're going off the track Newsound oh yeah Newsound's cool I like Newsound I like Newsound more than Raven and if we don't play our current we're losing anyways so might as well embrace that Flare <laughs> yeah Flare's the same ballpark we're never going to be able to afford to res that I think that's the biggest issue our biggest ice is like two credits like our ice is super cheap which I love Toll Booth. Now nah, we're gonna we're gonna spend all that money we would spend running a toll booth on a troll, and it's gonna be super cool. Yeah, yeah. 
We need fake points. Nah, nah. I don't know what you're talking about. This eavesdrop is probably terrible. The Thimble Rig Enigma thing is not going to work. You want Raven? They're going to be running the Highland server last click. That's true, actually. I don't know if we have enough threats. <laughs> Hardening news just for tags? We're not going to have the money to do that. But most importantly, we're trying to build something weird. And I don't want to just build an NBN deck that punishes people. Because like, if they go poor, they go poor, whatever. We need tag punishment card. We want to keep the rig plus eavesdrop. Yeah, you're right. The tags actually have no reason in this deck. Okay, well, obviously we don't need three of these. We probably don't need three of these. Um, there's no good tag punishment deck, uh, cards when this is our agenda suite. Besides, I like, closed accounts. Closed QPM? Yeah, QPM, though, fucks with our slots. If we put Raven, though, the QPM becomes a lot better. This the one that shuffles two cards away. Yeah, attitude adjustment is actually pretty good because we're running all the three-pointers and we're, like, pretty dirtily. Is there no good card that loses a click? Oh, we could play Eli, but if we res Eli with Highline, they're just not going to click through it. We really can't punch tags. Observe and destroy. Yeah, let's play a stupid tag punishment card. Let's play like a dumb one. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, this is such a good card. Play only if the runner has fewer than six credits. Why did they make this? Oh, Keegan's a lot better than this. Daniel, how's it going? First stream call live. Oh, you're, you're, this is going to be a good one. Because we are trying to play cards that we haven't played before. Self-growth is a lot better. That's the... Oh, never mind. What's the point of this one? Trash any card. Yeah, if they have less than six credits, who cares? If they're tagged, you always trash a resource. I do like Keegan a fair bit more. I feel like Keegan's super cute with eavesdrop. We're now a destruction deck. We're doing way many things at a time. Anyone <laughs> for free. Uh, yeah, we're a Keegan deck. They don't need breakers? Yeah, they do. Oh, you're right. They largely don't. Yeah, they do. They need to get the Thimble Rig. The rare tag-based rig shooter. That I honestly... We were testing for Worlds, Data Raven, Keegan Lane, in, uh, in Scorpios. Okay, we can just add more agendas. How bad is this? This is not good. We would do ice, ice... I don't know, Andy. Oh god, this is terrible. Okay, we need... How do we win? Uh, we uh, score all the points. How do we win is like a legitimate concern here. I feel like we need more things that interact with tags if that's what our deck is trying to do. Because right now our deck is like meant to be just Ash Heinlein Grid. Which is cool. But at that point, Surveillance Sweep is what? Three influence? Yeah, it's probably better. Uh, not this. Soul is also cool. Andre has been seriously avoiding that question. Yeah, I don't I don't think that question is that important. Our Ice Suite is so bad. It's like 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's just see what this draws like, though. Okay. Not great. Holy shit, Troll is terrible. Okay, what we're going to do... I feel like if we're playing troll, we have to play making news. So now money is definitely going to be an issue. Psycho, this deck looks like they would have lots of tags. Yeah, if they do go psycho, but we only have five pointers. If we're doing psycho, we probably want to play BL too. I think at this point, we probably want to just put quantums in there and then play like exchange. Making news, improved traces, and Monty Sinai Surveyor. How's it going, Phoenix? So yeah, we, we thought about some of those ideas. I'm thinking Thimble Rig is going to be our Surveyor. Uh, making news, I like a fair bit. Okay. All right, we got a deck now. Why are we playing Macrophage? Why are we playing Macrophage? What's one good big ice? <laughs> 
Sub boost a Gutenberg? Oh, fuck me. I love sub boosting a Gutenberg. Oh, sub burst is good. Doesn't observe and destroy combo off Highland? It does, but in if that ever lines up. Like, they have to fuck up so bad. <laughs> That's a remnant of the five seconds that we were excited about Arya about it. Flare's not bad if you're looking for a trace ice. It's kind of bad. Because, like, it's usually easier to trace it than the fire fires it. The thing is, like, observe and destroy just isn't a good card. Like, closed accounts is just way more impactful. I guess because we have Heinlein, that's wrong. What else can we sub-boost? Oh, God, we're going to play a whole bunch of trash in this, aren't we? Because we're back on the making news, so now we I want to do the Arya Bada, but now the eavesdrop stuff doesn't work. Archangel's good. Yeah, Archangel's not bad. Usually the trace on Archangel fires. And then we don't have to... The thing with the Archangel is that like it straight up fires, which is really exciting. Like it does fire. I feel like Thimble Rig we could do Jinja. Yoy. Um, hold on. Okay, now we've really lost the plot, and we just need to rein it in a small boost. Sub boost the Thimble Rig. It's not the worst. It's pretty bad actually. Okay, how much better is this deck? Loads better. First, second quest. That's going. That's running. That's a good, a good time. First, oh Jesus, that's terrible. Sub boost macrophage. Yeah, there's actually some cool sub boost stuff that you could do with this deck. If you don't know sub boost, it makes the card a barrier, and then we can have some really strong stuff. So now we're like going way into the deep end, where we have sub boost plus macrophage. You can do sub boost bandwidth, sub boost uh, Gutenberg. All that stuff is really good. Stealing money and landing a tag seems like a pipe dream. Yeah, it's also a lot of stuff, but if it fires, like, we win the whole game. Uh, emotionally. Can we afford to do all this stupid stuff? Uh, to some extent, also, making this a barrier is bad. If they have lamb, it becomes kind of bad. Uh, if they have paperclip, eh, it's still fine. Oh, God, are we doing it? In a matter with power tap, 419, macrophage seems really bad. I haven't played against that in a while. Okay, what's this is not the worst. This is while well, we have two exchange. That seems like too much. All right, we got a card slot for ice. Uh, what's a good trace ice? I guess now we actually can get the macrophage value. This deck is hot salad. Okay, install and stock credit. Double advantage credit. I think we need recursion. Yeah, actually, a single preemptive would actually be pretty good. Uh, I don't know how to drop for it, and I'm not dropping the troll. It's just way too important. It's way too important. This turn turns off, we lose the current war. Yeah, 100%. Well, it doesn't turn off. The trolls become Trace 4. Like, Trace 4 with NBN making news, that's, I think, the biggest thing is that we can afford to boost into this Trace. Surely we won't get flooded. No. <sighs> we will. 100% we will. Uh, 100% we will, we will get flooded. It also seems like a sin that we're not running C-Source, but what do I know? Oh, Jesus. Troll into daily quest? What are we doing? No, we 100% need that attitude adjustment. I just drew a hand. It looked terrible. Um, okay, so here I think we do Enigma install the SSL at hedge fund. Then we do install... No, we probably yeah do install double. Then we score it. Yeah, this is good. That data ward was almost an annoying combo. Thoth data ward? Yeah, there's a lot of ways to do that. We just need to call one card from the deck. It's likely going to be Macrophage, but I don't want to cut an ice. Uh, what can we do? We could cut Archive Memories and just run a better ice. Is there anything for two influence that seems really good? It's probably a uh, Surveyor, huh? It's probably Surveyor. Minus one Archive, minus one, plus one Gatekeeper. And Gatekeeper's not good, though. If you don't even if you don't do anything with it. I don't think gatekeeper is almost ever worth it. If we can't de-res it. Out of faction at least. God, this is trace five. That's good. This is probably not the worst deck. Ashfar, how's it going, Zero? Is Ashfar why is Ashfar worth it? Why are people excited about Ashfar? Afshar? Afshar. Why are people excited about Afshar? That's what I don't understand. 
Is this exciting? Is this exciting? Push this credit differential? Okay, well, we'll try it. Oh, fuck, we still have to cut a card. It's okay, we have a lot of code gates. Can't build turning wheel counters? Oh, yeah, that's cool. I guess with traces, though, it's hard to build turning wheel counters. Like, none of these are good for turning wheel, besides Thimble Rig, but, like, we've kind of committed to that. And they can run last click and fill, uh, farm off Troll. Drop the dumb macro? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> All right, troll chase, let's go. I swear to God, if someone like, if someone in chat Q snipes with a power tap deck, I'm quitting playing Netrunner forever. That's it. I think actually the biggest part about playing Making News is that the Making News, uh, if you ever seen the Making News alt art, it's gorgeous. That's really important. Only because it's good against energy. It's also kind of cool against like the bounce decks, like the the ones that jack out the embolus, not embolus, or of our stuff. UI doesn't seem to fit. Where's the tag coming from? Uh, themselves. We could probably easily put a C source in this deck to make it better, but uh, we didn't. It's a punishment if they go tag me largely. Hang up, loading four one nine. All right. Whoa, kid. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're gonna mulligan this hand. Kid has code gates. We have a lot of code gates. Feels good. Oh, opening hand is beautiful. Hey. Oh, that's an opening hand. So, Kit probably has some ice destruction, which is an issue because we're going to eavesdrop some code gates that might get trashed. But with Thimble Rig, we actually have some flexibility. I was running an earlier version of this deck last time we played. Oh, no way. Does Inversificator get a swap when they pass troll? Um, yes, because you can break no subroutines, which is all subroutines. You can fork a troll by doing nothing. Same thing with a tour guide. At the tournament, the GNK, I forked a tour guide with no subs. And it totally works. Best of luck, have fun. Oh, I gotta type that somewhere. All right. I feel like this is a matchup where we have a chance. Um, we are probably are gonna put on the hard hitting news pressure. I think we're just gonna install advanced, advance this. Honestly, install advanced, advanced jamming a degree mill turn one is like not the worst play, but nobody does that. You can't Inversificator though because you need to break the subs with Inversificator. Oh, no way, is that what it says? Okay, if that's what it says, yeah, then you can. Begalter is cool. But Begalter probably says if you have to use it too, though. Oh, they're dirty laundering it? Okay, well, they're actually not going to get any credits because the server's going to disappear. This is probably a re uh, mistake. If it's an agenda, they can't steal it if it's a degree mill. But because we're going to trash this, there's no server, so they actually lose uh, five credits. Got him. So that's cool. I don't think that was worth checking. It changes nothing. It, again, if it is a degree mill, they can't steal it, but whatever. They credited first too, which is interesting. So maybe they wanted to install something. They did go to low cards here, or low credits, which is really cool if we had hard hitting news, which we don't. But they've interacted with us and now they have no money, which is gonna be an issue for them. Same old thing coming down as well. Five credits, easily to see source. Fuck, we have an SSL. Maybe we'll draw an ice. Well, it was cool for a while. Oh, uh, we probably should have attitude adjustmented there. Because I'm not throwing out the preemptive. I think we actually might want to just install advanced NGO, but we still have to throw a card out. This is really awkward. I think we do attitude adjustment. So basically, we reveal, draw two cards, and then we shuffle that. Yikes. That sucks. I think we can let them trash the Highline grid. Yeah, they can trash that if they want. It's fine, we'll just preemptive it back in, I guess. This is also probably a mistake, but if they trash the three cons, pretty bad. And if they're playing the game where they have to respect C source, I guess they already have in that turn, so they might not have to. Um, they probably shouldn't run. They need to set up. And the same when they click for credit first click, they were looking to like SMC out of not a magnum opus, I guess. That doesn't exist anymore. I don't know why they click for credit first click. Maybe there was something at four credits they wanted to trash. Are you bought it as three or four? But it was an advanceable, so I don't know. Same old thing, Dirty Laundry, wow, okay. Well, they can still trash it. Going for a single, so they spent three clicks to get three credits on an Axis, which isn't great. I'm assuming same old thing is in their deck for cards like Spooned and stuff like that, but 
That's pretty slow. Now they're running here, they can trash it. I assume they will. I don't love that we just kind of threw this out there, but they're checking it, they're throwing it out, so their economy is going to suffer, and we need to capitalize on the weak economy. Like, legitimately, a troll in the remote, we could jam an SSL maybe behind it? No, they'd probably lose a click. Same old, same old thing. Wow, okay. Oh, wow, they couldn't even steal the degree mill. So, we're going to go ahead to attitude adjustment for sure here. So, we can shuffle some agendas away. Feels okay. Um, I think we want something on the remote. After our on R&D is not the worst because it has a face check penalty. And the trace here seems pretty good. They're probably better at dealing with code gates. I guess it doesn't matter because everything is a code gate. Uh, we can fix this later and put it on HQ once we get down off Thimble Rig. So we'll put this on R&D and we'll build this on the remote so we can jam next turn. Uh, they might hit this for sure, which is kind of rough, but that's okay. There's a small chance they'll same old thing Dirty Laundry, which honestly is, is pretty good for us. All right, so they need to threaten their decoder. Um, there's a lot of options. Inversificator is definitely pretty hot. Clone chip and pawn shop, so that's a restricted card, so they're not an inversificator. Uh, we can actually go ahead and probably jam the SSL endorsement. Um, they might think it's a degree mail, but we did show it to them. I think that's actually relatively safe. Uh, they could make this a, deco a code gate. It's a four strength code gate, which is still pretty good. There's a bit of high variance here, and they might just go ahead and like pawn the same old thing, putting them on six with two cards in hand. This seems okay. I'm generally not ambitious enough jamming agendas when I don't feel entirely safe. Wow, they pawned the clone chip. So they're at six, two cards in hand. They no longer can like SMC for clone chip. Playing a build script, one influence, draw two. This is the one that survived. The other one didn't. The other one rotated. So I think we're just going to score that up and get the nine credits. They could check here. They also could just like slam code gate run and they probably get in. Uh, they could also have things like from creation control. Uh, what's it called? Cyber Cypher would be pretty good on the remote. It's not unreasonable that they make it. Oh, just daily cast. Okay, cool. So it looks like our agenda. Mind you, Kit only has 10 influence, and so far we've seen one. And that's not like a really high impact card, which feels good. I miss Isla Cantrip. Uh, just like commenting through your deck. Running here, last click. Again, they're not respecting at all uh, hard hitting news or sea source. They see the eavesdrop. All right, they didn't hit the NGO, which is pretty good here. We have the exchange, and it looks like we're going to have the money. Tagging them is a problem. <laughs> we didn't put sea source in this deck because it's good. Uh, so we'll figure it out. I'm interested to see what they do once we force them. If we jam the NGO front, what happens? Cantrip is still pretty okay, just a little harder to guarantee a common at start. Yeah. Yeah, people are playing that. People are still playing a lot of like comment decks. Like with the, uh, what's it called? The one that you look at the top six or top five and rearrange them and then you top hat it. That was a deck that was being played before Worlds. Just spam. I think that deck like really needs to spam stim hacks. All right, I think they're up at six credits, which might be the most money they've had so far this game. Same old thing, build script. So that's three credits. Yeah, it's worth pointing this stuff out. Like, it feels good, maybe. But, like, in terms of just raw efficiency, this is not that much better than clicking for a dra card draw. Right? Like, they installed the same old thing, which on its own was worth three credits from uh, Aesop's. But then they're spending three credits and a card to draw two cards and gain a credit. It's, like, just as good as using your basic actions. If not worse. Probably worse because of the card. Insight, thank you. Cowbird, are you Sanjay? I think you're Sanjay. The drawn. There's the Angolo. That's the decoder of choice. Mind you, they have to get through. The first dice they encounter return is a code gate. Yep. Oh, how's it going, Sanjay? Finally, they found it. All right, well, we have the Thimble Rig eavesdrop combo, which is really fun. This doesn't have to be a res dice, which is a really cool thing. Other condition cards used to have to be resed. This one doesn't. So whenever they go through this, it's going to be trace five, at least the first one. Sanjay, were you on Dan's team for SOS? So mind you, eavesdrop. I think this is almost the final card. 
that came out from FFG? No, 47? Maybe it's not. I guess Wayland came after. I guess the last card is actually Lady Liberty. Um, but this is fun. It's on an encounter. They could be playing Spooned, which I think actually would make a lot more sense with the simple thing. He was there at top table like 60% of the time. A hey. What were the rules for SOS? Everyone had to play a different ID and or faction and everyone had to be represented? Like, is it exactly like uh, King of Servers? So four credits to their name. I'm pretty confident they can't get this. Because otherwise just throwing this out here is kind of bad. But putting it now in another daily cast, first click. So they're just considering that they're not going to run it. Three-person team, no overlap of factions. Cool. All right, we'll take the money. So if we draw an agenda here, it's really bad. We haven't seen our current yet. I think we're just going to draw once, see how it goes, and then just double advance this. The money doesn't actually matter. We probably should just be drawing one another time. Uh, okay. I don't know what their pressure is going to be. Next turn, they're going to gain actually a fair bit of credits with daily casts, and then they can pawn it after. So we could just draw really quickly. I think we'll just advance this and hope that they run on it, because it'll be pretty bad if they run on the NGO front. And there are a fair bit of 4-2s that might matter. Yeah, this is all an encounter. We basically can make anything into a... <laughs> anything becomes... What's it called? Uh, a data raven. Eavesdrop is really cool, the whole thing here. Okay, so this is an Afshar. So they're going to break one sub... Oh, they can break both subroutines, but it's rest, so whatever. So they're going to pay for a single here. There's only a... Uh, actually, there's still a fair bit of agendas in the deck. And if they steal Degree Meal here, it's not that bad. So they have to, they don't have to make this a code gate. So this is only two credits to go through, which is not that bad. So I think we're just going to go ahead and put something on top of it after. Uh, for what it's worth, Newtown is pretty annoying because they have to pay three. Even if there's no curtain because they have the boost with the Angolo. And then this becomes still a code gate. <laughs> so uh, we'll figure out what we want to do. I think the IP block is probably okay. They'll have to pay though. Like, again, three. It is a degree mill, they're shopping away everything. Wow, okay, so they have it. So now the exchange of information is online once we steal a one pointer. So they lost six credits to that and an ASAP's pawn shop, which feels pretty good. Proco coming down. And now they get that value. Okay, so now they're kind of online. So we'll put another ice there. They're not contesting the remote server at all. I feel like we can just jam whatever we draw if we draw. But we have no card draw cards in our deck. We have no uh Rashida. Going in for a single again, last click. Uh, there's some things that punish here, things like snare. We have no action, they can pay two. Getting a, what's it called, a thimble rig here is interesting because then we can swap the thimble rig from R&D uh, to server three, we'll swap those two around so that R&D is protected until we need it. We just might not know when we need it because we might top deck an agenda. Single axis, nothing there. We'll gain the money. We have an Ash, they didn't trash. Now the remote server looks super safe. So we're just gonna set up for the Ash. We'll put that on server three. Their money's pretty rough. There's actually a chance where Ash and R&D might just be better. And we'll put on this remote whatever's the most annoying. And I think we wanna do IP block on the inside and then this on outside of it just is a code gate. And this flexibility uh, lets us um, play around kit. We really wanna res our thimble rigs quickly. So far, I haven't used or making news credits once, and I think we would have fired a couple times with Asmari. So we'll see how good this is. I wonder if the Aryabata techs are fine uh, without um, door to door. Probably okay. Dirty Laundry going to HQ. Again, not caring about the money differential. Maybe they do have a misdirection in hand, but this seems pretty risky. What's the chance Angolo is all they need? We have a lot of traces, Angolo and money. Oh wow, they play a current. Cool, system seizure. So if they boost their Angolo, Angolo is boosted for the whole run. That's fine, that's not money. We have a troll, that's fun. It's technically using our ability. We have the Enigma. We did lose a Helheim, which honestly would be still pretty sweet. Uh, I don't want to actually preemptive any of these cards in because the best thing we could draw right now is economy. Uh, I think we might just want to install. 
putting something on HQ might distract them. Uh, the troll on the remote is probably okay. Troll with Ash is kind of annoying. I'll just put this on server three in advance once, whatever. I feel like the server is probably good enough for now. They haven't shown any multi-access. Once the R&D interfaces come down, which they're probably on, it seems like this is pretty straightforward. They, they value singles a lot, so I think RDI feels good to them. I love the space here for the eavesdrop. And then again, once we res this, we can force our th other thimble rig to be on this remote. So it's uh, we can move it around so we make sure we get a res to get the eavesdrop firing. Eavesdrop also isn't unique, so you can multiple eavesdrops things. It's pretty cool. Do you have nine credits again? Prokoth shuffled back into their deck. We just need to draw an agenda. Rashida would be really sweet, right? Draw three, that's exactly what we want. So I think next turn we might just draw three and throw out the chaff. We probably also want to ice HQ maybe, I don't know. Technically like we'd have no need to ice HQ because if we draw an agenda, it looks like we would straight jam it, which I think it is true. Especially with Ash. And this server is actually pretty cheap. This is like three credits plus IP blocks, it's five credit server. Seeing the exchange of information. Not sure why they're running singles there, because I think if we had the agenda, we would have jammed it. I don't know if they have like a Paul up or something. Lucky charm. They don't have a lot of influence. We haven't seen much of it though. Uh, spoon is going to be a huge issue if we lose a thimble rig with a with a eavesdrop on it. It'd be pretty sad. Spoon really good with Angolo. Proko drawing up. They're going to discard one. That's not so bad at all. Throwing out a second current, okay. Draw for a current. We'll just put this on HQ, play the money. Next turn we'll start drawing. Then we can draw like pretty wantonly. Cause technically we have some okay ice. This is a code gate. It's also good to get on the inside so we can put Enigma after it so this becomes a barrier. If this is an actual barrier, they have to pay like what, five credits to get through it? Which at that point they can run the trace cause trace five. Wait till we get our surveillance sweep. Surveillance sweep is also two credits to play. Man, expensive currents really don't see a lot of play, and that's just because, you know, it feels bad when you pay three and they literally do nothing. You can't guarantee that they'll ever do anything. I feel like to some extent currents would be better if, like, you played it and you know how many turns it's going to last, and it, you can't dispel it. If they were, like, an asset that you can't trash. But again, at that point, it's just assets, right? With, like, insane trash costs. Yeah, maybe you need to interact with them. Proko drawn up. They're not putting pressure on us. We're not doing anything. Maybe that's a problem with building a subpar deck. It's if you don't have enough card draw, it's going to be a slow game. That's the third same old thing. They really must have something good in their deck to same old thing. I'm assuming it is Spooned because we've only seen one influence. And we're about, what, a third through their deck? We have a fair bit of money. I know we haven't rezzed our ice, but I think our most expensive ice is a single tow booth. We haven't drawn yet. We needed to draw this. If we drew this, we'd be in a good spot, but they took it off the top. Also, for what it's worth, if you want to optimize your play, they're installing same old thing and then drawing after. You never want to do that, unless you think same old thing's the best card in your deck. Because there's a chance the card they drew is more worth installing than this one. Wow, Hushuk! To see two cards. Okay. Well, this is probably not going to go well for them. So that's a thimble rig. So they can break that for one, and then they have an IP block, which they break for five, and then an Afshar for two. This is for literally two cards. Yikes. Okay. So are we going to uh, change its position? Um, I don't think we need to do it now. It doesn't really do much. So that's Hushuk. They have two five cost install cards. This is an IP block. The trace here, we can make a five. For what it's worth, we can make it a bit harder. But I st still think the the two the two axes here is not gonna be that bad. All right, they don't have to break both subs, so they're gonna access with two cards again. Hard hitting news would be a huge punishment here.
Putting rig in front of HQ lets you fix AppShare when you turn. Yeah, totally. We're going to move this here. Actually, there's a chance IP block. Well, we don't want IP block on the outside. We want two IP blocks on the inside. It's an IPO and an NGO front. Okay. So this shuffles, we don't draw either of those. That actually was pretty good for us. So I can trash the NGO front. Now they have one credit, so we just need a top deck and agenda. Uh, do we want to switch? Yeah, whatever. We'll do it. No. Well, that's at least something. That is at least something. And we'll just put something on the outside here. This is annoying. And then we'll res this. Go ahead. Okay. And we're off. Gaining three credits a turn. Their economy is absolutely uh, slowed out. They basically have to proco for stuff. We haven't played a gamble yet, but like it's hard for them to play gamble this turn. Uh, they have two, one more dirty laundry. So like there is a reason to ice archives. I don't think it's that good anymore. And we're going to swap these next, I think. Yeah, I like this up here with another ice in front of it. Remember the res? Yeah, totally. So this is three cards a turn. Uh, then obviously as soon as we trash it is when we draw a card. And they're dieseling up. They're looking for something. Uh, peace on our time, stim hack, all this stuff could be possible. We also have to remember for this, I'm going to forget. So daily cast. This puts them down into two credits next turn. So like it's a perfect time to jam because this is credit negative for the following turn. I guess unless they pawn it. Oh yeah, they don't have their pawn shop anymore. Okay. Throw out some cards, please, an agenda. This would have been so much better if it's Rashida. Man, Thimble Rig is a cool card. Do like this one a fair bit. All right, they have to throw out five or three, excuse me. Just started raining outside. All right, they show a Hushuk Polongi, which is a pretty scary card. Uh, we took out our one virus card, but I'm not complaining that much. Okay, so we fixed that. Just like an agenda. Oh, we have this cool current. Yeah, fuck it. It's what our deck does. So this is Surveillance Sleep. Um, so now, during a run, they have to boost for the traces first, which is really cool for almost all the trace cards. It makes the IP block much more annoying. Obviously, the ash gets really good, uh, but they're going to play their current anyways. Whatever. We had it for a turn. We had it for one click. It was good. It was good for one click. I've never seen a deck that actually runs three system seizures. This is it, though. I wonder if they'll same old thing system seizure through a current. They probably will. Regardless, the new sound has a current, actually. That's pretty sweet. And I honestly think that we want to swap the new sound. Yeah, we definitely want to swap the thimble rig with the, the new sound just to make sure this is not not on the outside. So they're Dirty Laundry Archives. So they gain three credits, but they interact with us. So sea source, all that stuff is an issue. And I think next turn we'll just draw three just because it's going to be a really long slow game if we don't draw it aggressively. Has a remote over here. IP block, thimble rig, troll. Honestly, this remote could be better. Could be better. The Ash is definitely the best part of this remote. And Ash plus Troll is fun. So they might be on same old thing who should. That might be like the thing that their same old things are for. So I'm just used to fire a trace. It's going to be amazing. <sighs> Tell me about it. Ash Shower. They can't break both. So they're going to break this for three credits. So they're being three cards for a single again. If we had an agenda, we definitely would have jammed it. I think this access on HQ is not very fruitive. Oh, you, sorry. Oh, they're just undoing it. Okay. Well, apparently it was one credit too many. We're gonna draw three, proceeds not to draw three. Well, we drew our current. What do you want me to do? We 100% play our current. We have to. That's why we did this. I 
I'm regretting not putting Keegan Lane in. I know they're on clone chips, but like Keegan Lane would be pretty good. I'm uh, playing a data sucker. Cool. Now we want ice archives. Yeah, we'll put a new sound there, but we'll draw twice at least. Oh, we forgot to move this. Okay, whatever. Put this on archives. I feel like we don't need another thimble rig. So we've got our two credits like every turn with NBN. Man, if we played Aryabata, this would be no fun. I think their economy is nowhere near good enough to like deal with the Aryabata traces. We just put like three daily quests on three different servers behind three uh, macrophages, macrophi. So far this has been oops, all ice. Yeah, we don't actually even have that much ice in this deck. The problem is like we don't have that many agendas. Like, there's six agendas in 20? Actually, sh there's a shit ton of agendas in R&D. They could lose in, like, a, a single maker's eye. We could lose. And, like, that's a problem, is if we don't jam the remote every turn, they can just credit up and run here. Like, we don't have a lot of tricks. We could put a second Ash here. That's probably the best thing we got. We also just want to score the one-pointer, but then again, we could, like, do a threat, alpha, threat level alpha into exchange in theory, but we don't have that card, so... Yeah, QBM for three pointers is 100% what we need to do. QBM seems pretty good. Deuce is wild. This is another influence. So we've seen two out of 10, three out of 10. Mind you, Data Sucker as well. And now they're going to throw out two cards. We've gone through most of their deck. I think Fly on the Wall is better than QBM here. I don't know. We don't have enough punishment, but I do like Fly on the Wall more than I play it. So I think we just put Toll Booth up here, jam an agenda, we'll figure it out. Toll Booth, they break for two, three, four, five, six, which is a lot of money for their deck. And then it makes the troll typeless. Ah, oh, the, troll, the troll beautifully eats Kit's ability. Oh, they didn't fire the second part. Okay, so now they have 11 credits, mind you. I'll throw some stuff out. And they're not building towards like a Hushik. Like their deck seems to have three Hushiks and so far, like are they on Hushik 5? Threw another clone chip. Keegan Lane just looking better and better. Uh, we're gonna swap Thimble Rig with that. Okay, here we go. Maybe they're playing this actually just for the, the degree mill, which I don't think is wrong. The worst part of this is we're going to score the agenda and it's going to turn off the current. So, like, News Hand gets a bunch worse. Thimble Rig plus Eavesdrop is really fun. It's a really cool combo. Diesel drawing up three. They have 13 credits. Again, Ash is trace six to start, three to trash, let alone all this shit. Turning wheel coming down. Oh shit, our Thimble Rig. We're gonna sell us out our Thimble Rig. And we really needed land attack the trash. I think they're never gonna run the remote. I think they're just terrified because they were just scared of this two ice when they had an Angolo. I think they know that this is an Ash. So we gotta make sure that we don't lose the Thimble Rig. This is actually pretty good against Thimble Rig. That's one credit, it's not that good. So I think we're gonna swap our Thimble Rig back with our new sound. Yeah, that one's the most annoying. Uh, yeah, it's equally annoying to IP block. Swap the boring thimble with the eavesdropped one. I think we want the eavesdrop one for the remote. But if we want to get a res, yeah, we want the thimble rig on the outside. You're right. I just thought, thought they were going to run the remote, but it looks like they're not. It's another influence. Also, turning will mind you, another influence. It might not be anything spicy, just a bunch of these one point cards, one influence cards. And they're almost at the end of their stack, and I don't see how they're hushuking reliably. I don't think there's any other good five cost cards here. Maybe like their console is a. Uh, is uh, the gauntlet, maybe? There's no other really good five costs. Maybe Dinosaurus, if they really care about the strength boosting. There's like three or four turns where we, we literally did nothing, which seems like a problem. Dino or Daredevil? Oh yeah, Daredevil could be. Oh, they know there's a new sound. 
on R&D here. Okay, so it looks like they're trying to run R&D. So instead of getting three credits, they have to run now, which is awesome. So the worst case, they could just like spend a, a credit and break Afshar. It's not that bad. I don't, I don't like this card, I'll be honest. Not out of faction, at least. Two influence is a lot. Like again, Surveyor would be a lot better. Surveyor would actually be pretty sweet. Yeah, we probably should just put Surveyor in our uh, deck. That sucks. Rip Creeper. Creeper was five? Oh, fuck yeah, they're going for it. Let's go. Troll. Hell yeah. Trace. Uh, yeah, whatever. Whatever. So they can either tag or end the run. It's happening. <laughs> no subs. That fucking card. This is not the worst card. This card's fine. It's a really cool with Ash though. Like both of these options here are pretty bit. Gotta pay the troll toll to get in. It's a is it a, it's a always sunny reference, I take it. Sort of. Maybe I just anytime you see that. Cody, how's it going? I've missed many vlogs. Hey, welcome. It's been a while. Thanks for dropping by. We're playing uh we just built this deck. It's kinda silly. Trace was successful. Value. They lose a click. They have one click left, which means that this trace here is actually really good. The Thimblework trace is actually really reasonable, and we can spend almost all our money on it to give them a tag. Does this work? All right, so it's three. So, like, we don't have to spend all our money because even if we spend, like, whatever amount of money, they can't get through it. So we're not going to spend money. Yeah, we're not going to spend money. Because if they spend four to get through this, like, we just put it back here anyways. It's fine. I'm so happy for the silliness. It's a real return for form. MG Classic, if you will. It is. It's been a while. We've kind of lost our way in a bit. We've been playing pretty competitive Netrunner for a while. But, like, we used to do a lot more dumb stuff. That was mostly YouTube videos where it's like, hey, let's do this silly thing. But this is still four credits for them because they don't have a link. And then we'll put it here. And I don't care that the IP block is probably better. This is another four credits. This is a good piece of ice. Making these fired once. Feels good. Ooh, they got a tag. No clicks left. Turning wheels getting definitely getting trashed. Even Proko probably. With 11 cards left, I don't know. You want to break that for one? Oh, you got to break it. Okay, cool. Um, So we could give them another tag, which honestly doesn't matter. So I feel like the IP block is better here. It also has two relevant subroutines, and then we can easily trace them out with Ash. So again, this is pretty expensive. This is five to six credits, which means the Ash trace on its own is good enough to keep them out. Still nothing better than 128 cards max. Yeah, we did 113. Undefeated the GNK. I don't know whether I should publish the deck list or not, but uh, we refined it. to uh, We cut out like four cards and made it so much better. What's a new card in archives? Oh, this is Daily Quest, which is actually a pretty cool card. Um, it's pretty strong. Oh, for what it's worth, we should have swapped this with that, but we can do it at the beginning of our turn. It changes nothing. Oh, it actually changes a lot because I think we want to get the Thimble Rig off of here. But I think we'll just trash the Turning Wheel. Should publish it. I'd love to run it at some point. Okay, maybe I will. All right, so then they don't have enough money. I hundred percent we trash turning wheel. It's probably have another one, but they have to also clear the tag. I think we just do trash trash. I don't care enough about the same old thing. I don't think it's good enough. Yep. They saw the ash. Well, of course it has to be like a defensive upgrade like Ash. Like I think the idea of being upset because this is an Ash. No, 100% is the Ash. Yeah, yeah, they saw it. So yeah, now nothing's going to happen. They can't even trash it. They're one credit short. Uh, okay, we're good. 
So Ash, mind you, trace four, so we don't even have to boost. So they just basically spent a lot of money. We spent some money rezzing. Um, and then that's good. And we're going to swap these. We're going to trash turning well, trash Proco. Then, like, install an ice or something. <laughs> I want another... Uh, no regret. I want another eavesdrop to get on this bad boy. But then again, we can't punish tags relatively well. I feel like we need a deck that punishes tags better and probably not a highline grid deck. We're doing like two janky things. The trashing a two credits cast worth it. Honestly, the way that their economy is going, maybe. Yeah, honestly, it might be. It seems really spiteful, and I think that's the biggest problem with that play. But uh, definitely Proko, definitely Turning Will. This, honestly, their econ's kind of dried up. Ours has two, though, but we don't need much more economy than this. Uh, swap. Honestly, these two are fighting together because they'll never hit the troll. Oh, we have a surveillance sweep. <laughs> Trash. Trash. It's probably not even worth playing. That's a really sad sentence. Probably not worth playing. I think we'll advance this once. That's probably the best thing we do and throw this out. We should get CV for sub boost. Or eavesdrop. Oh, consulting visit? <laughs> Three influence. We probably should just play localized product line at that point. I think localized product line is underrated considering some decks actually are playing uh, a consulting visit for credits. Like you might as well play lo uh, localized product line because then we could pull three thimble rig or we could pull three hedge funds, which is kind of a bad play. Right up there with same old thing for laundry. It's probably better than that. All right, so now on R&D, our two quantums are safe. That's the second build script, if not the third. And again, I don't know what their uh, hooshiks are going to be at. Removing the tag. Okay, no longer safe. And we probably want to swap these just to make R&D more annoying. Yeah, we have Ash. We don't need it. Oh, this is like, if you want to contest the remote, which I think they're far away from, you don't want to install this because this means next turn you're farther credits. Like they could have clicked for credits, so this is technically minus two credit play next turn, right? What is this game? A game where we don't draw our agendas. Oh, they're undoing it. Oh, they're stalling Beth. That's definitely way better. Still probably not good enough if you want to contest next turn. I think it speaks volumes about this deck that we're still playing the same game. Uh, yeah, to some extent. Like, even if the deck was bad, like, I think we would lose faster. I don't think they can test R&D. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to move that. Uh, they don't have turning well anymore. Yeah, this is fine. It honestly might have been better that we don't res this. Because money clearly doesn't matter. Ooh, hey, we actually ducked Beth. We gave him a credit instead of a card. No, actually it's 10, right? Oh no, wow, we, we dodged him. <laughs> we res this underneath the Beth threshold. Got him. Um, Yeah, we just need to draw an agenda to jam it. Eavesdrop and then like eavesdrop and then jamming a uh, quantum would be so cool. Where you have to do trace three on encounter three times, one of them being a trace five, and then Ash. So good. So far, I sweet I doesn't see it hasn't been shit. It's been okay. It's been annoying enough. I actually feel like giving them the card with a, with uh, Beth would have been better than giving them a credit right now. What about a fast track? Fast track's really shitty with five threes. That's the only problem. Like, there's no good play with five five dark combos. Eavesdrop thimble rig. Yeah, there's two combos. How's it gonna flip? One's eavesdrop thimble rig, which is actually pretty good. Robo algorithm on top of it's even better. But the other thing we could do is um oh we could play food instead of degree mill. Doesn't really change much. Oh, it's influence too. I realize we don't have a restricted, but this probably should be a surveyor. Uh, the other combo is troll with Heinlein grid, which would have been really cool. Just showed up. Hope you're doing okay. Oh, double click for same old thing. Deuce is wild. Not great tempo. They actually don't have sure gamble in their deck. It doesn't look like their deck has sure gamble. So again, that's three clicks to. This is better than dirty laundry, I guess. 
Whereas fast track for the QBM puts them on the clock to win out of centros. That's true. That's really true. Here they can steal a five, any threat through the remote? No, I don't think they can. I think the Ash is really good. Oh, they're running. New sound and archives position zero. So now they have to make a run. They gained the credits first, so they can't even remove a tag for fee. They're pretty cunningly playing around Highland Grid by having <laughs> no money. <laughs> yeah, not a lot to lose. That's how you play against universal connectivity fee. You offshore it in your deck, in your hand, or in your binders at home. I don't know how you do it. Okay. We're so close. We need that one last agenda. Just jam a QPM into the remote. It's all we need to do. There's a small chance we lose to Maker's Eye, by the way. It's always like going to be a possibility. The Enigmas honestly probably aren't worth slots in this deck. I feel like we just want to better ice because we have a lot of cheap low ice and trying to hit the Enigma into the other thing is not good enough. I think we cut the Enigmas for like fun NBN stuff. Carrot Handsome, how's it going? Could have lined up that Observer and <laughs> Oh my god, we had it! We could have Observer and Destroyed an Angolo! Oh, it would have been so good! Fuck me, you're totally right. Oh, they do have Cyber Cypher. It makes sense with the clone chips. That's fucking rad. Oh my god. Got my regional this weekend. I have no idea what to play for Corp. Oh shit. Um, Titan Fastman is pretty good. Uh, Polina is really cool. I like Polina a lot right now. It feels like good net runner. They have to run, mind you. I think they'd probably just run HQ, which sucks. It's like not a good run, I mean. Oh, they're running Q? Why? They don't even have Data Sucker. Wait, what happened to Data Sucker? What happened to Data Sucker? Oh, they pawned it. Excuse me. Yeah, we'll res this. Whatever. So this is no current, but it's still three credits to get through. Seems kind of rough, unless they want to just float the tags. Play this deck. All right, so seeing two cards is a Nygma Thimble Rig, so like not really great. Cool. Again, like running archives just to see what's in archives doesn't make sense when we have this like pretty good remote that we were doing nothing with all game. Like I, I think if there's agendas running HQ running archives doesn't make a lot of sense. It's either R and D or server three. And they know this is a new sound, which doesn't actually do anything, doesn't end the run. It's uh technically its ability is Holy shit. <laughs> we're going in. Thimble rig. No? Uh oh, we're not going in. So they they're on uh, <laughs> all good. Uh, so we know they have Stimac in hand, unfortunately. That might make more sense with all three same old things, and that with fact we haven't seen a lot of influence. Careful. It's hanging out in the temp zone. Alright, so that's what they're probably gonna play for the remote, which is honestly fine. Uh, R and D could be an issue. Like if they steal a three-pointer off the top of the deck, fuck me. I think we actually want to play the current just so that the new sounds are a bit more annoying. The dreaded temp zone. It's been pretty aggressive now with the undo click. I wonder why it's there. Again, sea source, hiding news. There's so many bad things that could happen to them right now because they're interacting with no money. <sighs> Do we just put toll booth on here? It's so expensive. We spend so much credits installing big servers. Aesop's kid no influence in sight. Does this sort of make sense for APOC? I really don't know about that. Uh, do we want to thimble rig anything? No. <laughs> I guess we play that. Draw for small. Oh, that's actually good. We can play both of those. Okay, so at least these have something, but whatever. Thought also, though, also Hushuk Apoc, not a deck. Yeah, it's true. Hushuk's the biggest problem. That's the corpses right before they get Apoc. <laughs> There's no way this is an Apocalypse deck. All right, they do the traces first. That's probably the best with both Troll and uh, Ash. I think Ash is actually probably the biggest thing here. And we can probably get our Highline Grid on R&D and it won't matter. That's cool. That's really cool. Uh, Data Sucker coming down. Not sure how much value that's actually going to get because they have to make multiple runs in Centrals before that even pays off. And that's kind of hard. Our HQ is three credits. Archives is like now four credits. Unless they go tag me. Which again, we've given no reason not to go tag me. YOLO. Holy shit. This actually might work out for them. Like, I don't disagree with this YOLO. I feel like we should have swapped these last turn. Fortunately, we knew that they have a stim hack. Uh, yeah, they're going to get a single here, and they actually might, might steal an agenda. 
Uh, I'm not going to swap, though. They're not going to make another run, right? This is actually really expensive. Oh, they can't even, they have to trace one of these. They can only break one on code gate and we have three in a row. This is gonna go terribly for them. Like this is trace five, they trace first. This is trace five. The, and then the new sound also is trace end the run. Like this is not gonna work out for them. They knew one IP block into new sound and we have this current. There's no way that this run is gonna succeed. This is not the right kind of yellow. Cause mind you, they need to convert this. That's two, four, five, five credits to get through this on its own. And then they have two legitimate things they have to trace through. And this actually they can't trace through. So like if they want to get an access to it, they need the Angolo for the new sound, which they know exists here. <laughs> APOC is bay. I think APOC is pretty good right now. It's the ultimate card to put in the Big Max deck. Well, hey, at least this might fire. That's cool. That's really cool. Value. Unfortunately, they can spend eight, and then we'll just get them with the second one. Well, okay, so they do the trace first. I wonder how Jintenteki.net does this. Ooh. So they go first. <laughs> Very cool. I like this card a fair bit. The art is also cool enough. Good work. Simon Wiener. Is it Wiener? Yeah, I think it's Wiener. It's a weird way to spell Wiener. All right. Since Hooshaker refers to printed installed costs, can you argue it works with APOC? No, you can't. Just because I think it specifically says installed cards have no type, type, no cost, nothing. They increase to four. Okay. That's exactly enough value. And they lose a second stim hack with the stim hack. I love when that happens. It actually happens a fair bit just because the stim hacks clog up in hand. But you feel like a, a fucking pro when you do that. Uh, no, I'm going to keep this on the remote. Feels good. Okay. Still advance advance, right? They could have another stim hack in hand, but this plus this seems good. Like, you pawn shop the, the data sucker for sure. My experience is that you can be a jerk about anything. Yep. Seems to be a lot of recursion on the runner side of late. What do you think of Blacklist? I think Blacklist is good in asset spam decks. Uh, I honestly don't think there's that much recursion, for what it's worth. Um, I really don't think there is. But uh, it's not bad in asset spam decks if you have like one influence left over. I think that's pretty hot. Specifically, Anarch is heavy in your meta. The thing is, like in most common decks, if you're not like rig shooter or doing something particularly interesting with it, you can't, like you just don't have slots. Not slots so much. Slots can be difficult, but like, you, you know, where are you going to put it, right? Like you need to protect it. Yeah, this looks like a scoring window. Uh, this is their last click. And we have an at oh okay well they just click for credits three ngo fronts in the bin this hundred percent is winning agenda all right well we scored every agenda we drew good game all right well that took 46 minutes how was anybody still watching this undefeated oh man that took forever we could have played way faster than that like our turns were really fast we were just like okay we know what you do GG. This is because Jank is king. <laughs> All right, we're going to do it again. I think we have some cool things in here. We're definitely going to tune it up. <laughs> Never play it again. No, we're going to do it again. Troll and eavesdropping will be restricted next. There's a chance. Yo, they restricted. Uh, they my. I'm telling you, they restricted uh, dorm computer. They were onto this shit. Yo, Pab, what's up? The new Arkham campaign is killing me. Oh, shit. Uh, the Circle Undone? I haven't I haven't started it yet. Cheers. Okay, we're going to make some quick changes and we're going to jump back in. We're going to do it here. Free dorm computer. This needs to be stopped. Um, okay, what are we going to change? Okay, so what we said, Enigmas are bad. Afshar is bad. So we're going to put in a single copy Surveyor because that's like a fine ice. And we have two ice slots. Uh, putting Rashida also is good, but 14 ice isn't enough. What's like a good trace-based ice that we want? What was the one damage done? Uh, it was they uh, they ended a run of a uh, stim hack, stim hack trash, stim hack. So wow, Ash is actually probably way better than Highland Grid. This is definitely backwards, but fuck it, this is jank. Circle and Dun looks so good. It does look really good. Carcosa also is amazing. Surveyor is good, but we only have fifteen influence. 
We want something in faction that's like trace based. Raven maybe. Raven seems okay. Would Archangel be good, or are you wanting to keep the runner out? Archangel's not bad at all. I don't feel like uh, Archangel works. Yeah, Archangel works relatively well with the other thing. It's a bit expensive. In time, I choose a restricted card. I'm tempted to take three copies. Interesting to see you only choose one. That's influence, though. This is not an optimized deck, but uh, I don't think you necessarily need to take three. Two Ash and two Highland, two Surveyor. I think that's definitely better, but we haven't fired a combo off, so I'm not going to remove the Highlands or the Trolls or anything like that until our combo fires. That's just kind of like live by the blade, die by the blade, am I right? So I think we need NBN or Neutral Ice, and I'm going to put Enigma back in. Yikes. Yeah, Raven's not the worst. The thing is, like, Raven is not uh, an annoying face check, and all our ice is actually, like, pretty annoying face checks. Don't look at Temple Rig. We'll check this out. Door to door. <sighs> Influence. Also, no, we're playing another current. Thoth, Hydra. I think it needs to be way cheaper. Our money's kind of shit. Our money's pretty shit. Faction NBN. So it has to be, like, something beautiful we're not thinking of, right? Information overload is pretty good. How's it going, John? The nine cost century flare is too expensive, unfortunately. Uh, let's do this quickly. Oh, slot machine's good. Yeah, slot machine's not bad. Is authenticator good? No, it's not. Yeah, I think slot machine's probably it. I just want to see if there's anything good with trace on it that gets additional value from the weird shit we're playing. Gunberg honestly is not the worst. If Econ was better, one assassin would be cute. I don't love assassin. That's the problem is like as soon as you get ice, that's cheaper to like, that's the cool thing about IP block. It's cheap and breaking it is annoying. Tracing is annoying and the face check is good or the early game. But like generally if the, if the other thing fires, like you break it or you trace through, like it's, they're both equally taxing. I don't know. That's the problem I see with big trace ice. It's like, oh wow, cool. I can trace through that. What were we thinking? Hey, Hydra. I don't know. We had. A, I think it was slot machine is the best shot we had so far. Oh, TMI would have been so good in this deck. God, I miss you, TMI. Turnpike, not bad. Is Turnpike good? Breaking bugs rotated. Yeah, waiver is cool too, but a bit too expensive. I do like waiver a fair bit, but I feel also our deck is like all code gates. I think Turnpike or slot machine. This is still legal. We've never played this card. This is probably not a bad card. John, you're saying Hunter? Virgo's like better Hunter, right? Turnpike is my fan favorite of mine. Yeah, Turnpike's not bad. No, I think we're gonna do Virgo. <laughs> it's five string sentry. Like that lines up relatively well. And like, even if you fire the trace and they beat it, it's good. This is a bad idea. But then we played Virgo and that's like cool. Wait. There's an HB Virgo that's actually like not the worst. The HB Virgo is like not bad, Sagittarius. If we want to play our rig shooters, okay, we're losing the plot. And you're right, we could probably play Waver. Okay, we're going to res the Virgo. Yeah, Virgo can guarantee attack, which I think is super relevant. Uh, and I don't think we have value from trashing cards in hand. Slot machine's good though, because it's econ. Okay, well, we'll do this and then we'll fix it later. Trace two is E. How's it going, Otrakun? It is, but this is technically trace four because we're making news. But you're right, Trace 2 sucks. I think we probably should have done only one Virgo. Yeah, fuck it. I want to see what Virgo does. What's a tag punish? Not a lot. No follow-up questions, thank you. Uh, okay, we have Criminal, no Link. They're going to have some money, which is pretty good. Our opening hand, not great. Could be worse, but we don't have anything to protect HQ from Siphon. So we want to get like a... Oh, that's way worse. Holy fuck, we're fucked. Hey, best of luck, have fun. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. We shouldn't have mulliganed. Caduceus? Oh, yeah, it's influence. Caduceus is good, though. <laughs> Pay two trash resource is our tag punishment. Yeah, the tag punishment part of this deck is totally lacking, but, like, your opponent doesn't know that in the first game they play against you, so that's, like, what we're going to capitalize on. And this is Trace 5, mind you. We're making news. 
If you would think it'd be more efficient, we have no money. Oh, fuck. They're going to run aggressively. Good thing we have almost a third of our agendas in HQ. Is Siphon back? Are we talking about a new Siphon? We're talking about a new Siphon. I think Diversion of Funds isn't an elegant card to say, so we just say Siphon. That's a card. It dices up R&D and then gives us flexibility to, to bump it later. I think we're going to do that. They're going to be running a lot. Icing up all centrals has some value. No surprises what this is. I think they'll face check it so that they have a four credit swing. And then they can Amakua through this. And we do have IP blocks to, to deal with the Amakua. We did take out the Macrophage. But okay. So no data rave. Corporate Grant coming up. Might be an issue. Oh, Rizeki. Slow. This card, I I really don't like this card. I'll be honest. I feel like the slow dip economy means that corpse have to rush really fast. Oh, we have it. We have the magic. I feel like we have to draw once here. Oh, that's unplayable. All of this is unplayable. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's bad. What do we throw out? I feel like the daily quest seems important in our... Uh, in our bid for uh, winning the game here. Exchange of information is our only punishment. I can't throw out an agenda. I think we actually do throw out the exchange. That sucks a bit. Whatever, we're not gonna play it now. Corporate Grand helps your news hand. Oh yeah, totally valid. It is a current. We have an end the run code. Century two, mind you. We're gonna be bleeding a credit a turn. So basically we want just daily quest and a nice in front of it. Daily quest IP block, probably one of the better things we can do. Uh, so I hope we rip in a... Th even troll daily quests. Fuck it. Dirty Laundry getting four credits. Seeing the one card we threw out. They know that we have tag punishment now. This might slow them down. Whether they think it's Caesars or hard hitting news. Both is important. And there's a second crowdfunding. So they have two crowdfunding off the top. That's really bad. So luckily this is better. And we're going to pre-res this because that's how it works. And I think we can res everything here. This is mind you trace five. Which they could contest. They only need to access this with one credit. Because of the way that it's worded. I don't know if they'll run Archives three turns. This card can let us dig out of a hole. And even we can Ash on top of it, but I feel like we need Ash to jam an agenda. Giving him an SSL, honestly, probably isn't the worst thing for us. Scoring an SSL, though. The thing is, like, it's now a uh, turn five, and we haven't done anything in terms of agendas, so they're probably going to want to run HQ. They get free money when you res it? Yeah, totally, but, like, we can't do anything about that. It's basically a trace three. Yeah. What well, if they run HQ first? We lose. All right, they're going for it. All right, that's a big swing. So, uh, Trace. I don't think we're going to spend actually any money on this. So, they're going to spend five credits, six credits. It's honestly not that bad for us. And they only want to run once a turn, though, if they want to maximize Los's ability. What? They took the tag? That's terrible. Wait, what? <laughs> they could have gone through, not had a tag, not spent the inside job, got a bankroll credit. This doesn't make a lot of sense. Like they spent four credits and an extra two clicks. Yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. At least we got an inside job out of the hand. Oh, okay. I, even when they have the deuces wild, I don't think that makes a lot of sense. That can't have been right. They also didn't install something this turn, which is cool. Okay. Fuck me. Oh shit. Piss. Uh, 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 the hand. It's a good hand. Okay. Thinking. Install advance. Advance is pretty bad. If they install one card, we get we get drowned. I think we'll draw once. Oh, this is real rough, my friends. Just jam one, get your econ rolling. Yeah, I think we have to jam it. I just wish we had six credits so that at least they can't corporate grant us out of it. Not enough gendas. Yeah, we could have another one. And fucking Rizeki. Like, Rizeki means we lose if we don't win in the first 15 to 20 turns. Against, like, an econ-based deck. And this troll is not very good because we have to use our making news credits on something else. 
Yeah, I think we'll jam next turn. We'll see if they install. Yeah, okay, pad tap. Whatever. We don't have economy. So we play around pad tap. Big brain. Okay. So they might pop off and run. I think they run this turn because they installed two crab funding. They might just run archives three turns. I expect them to poke HQ here. This is actually like a sh kind of shitty play on the basis that uh, I think an Amakua. Oh, it's an Angolo. Uh, yeah, that's why Angolo is good. If you have money, you can contest everything. Um, but now they can contest centrals. So they're going for this. Uh, lol. They gain two credits. <laughs> Feels bad. Do we boost this one? I think so, because they're going to break the other one. So what do you do? I think you lose a click always. That's a good ice. Now it's res, it's a good ice. I think we jam this next. What a cool card. All right. So if they lose a click, it doesn't matter that much. But if they end the run, it doesn't matter that much. It's actually really good for them, but they don't know that. Whoa, they paid four. It feels good. They paid four. Oh, we win. We win the game. They paid four for troll. Hell yeah. Let's go. And this is another like fucking four credits. They could do trace three. We can't boost it. They probably should just trace this. If they break it, it's a fuck up. Actually, no, because we can NGO front. We probably should NGO front here. Oh, they're doing it. Okay, so they're goofing up. Because they could have just done the trace. It's going to be way cheaper. That was an expensive turn for them. They're going to get one from this, and they're also going to get bankroll. Caesar's close again. Feels good. I think we jam now because I don't care if they steal this. They're going to start next turn with five possibility to get bankroll up. No. No, do we? Do we? Do we? No. No. Don't love this play. Gets the Genesis at HQ. <laughs> uh, yeah, no matter what, SSL is nine credits, which is pretty great. And they have to pop the bankroll largely if they want to control this remote. Fortunately, if we score this, we have to throw something out. Vicky, we do. How's it going, Vicky? Running through troll ice to NGO feels bad. Yeah, that's the ultimate troll. Maybe we have to do that more. Oh, Kree Fair, they're playing a card. Hernando, don't worry, we're not gonna have. I think the most subroutines an ice has is two in this deck. Troll section. All right, we might actually just have this here. We have to discard a card. That's actually unfortunate. I think Highline Grid is the card we throw out. Doesn't that suck? Clear the current. Huge thing. Okay, what do we throw out? IP block is really good because they all right now have Angolo. They definitely have Amakua. Highline Grid, we res for three. Um, And then they always just pay four for troll. So we also need the current for this to be good. It's definitely one of the worst cards in our hand. I think they just run archives three turns. They actually might just run HQ. Watch them dump the next two pad taps. Oh yeah, right, I forgot pad tap, give them money, but we can't afford to trash pad tap, whatever. Yeah, now they're going for it, which is actually okay for us. Uh, there's no current, but like that's still annoying. Um, and uh, they didn't think we could res this, so they're gonna run here three times. So again, could be really bad for us. They could win this turn for what it's worth. It's unlikely, because I think they'll only run through this once, which also still cost them five fucking credits. Like you trace this, it's the same cost, and then you can use this. Hit the IP block. Lucky. 
Now ice is rezzed. Now I think you want to run R&D twice just to get your two pad taps or your two, um, what's it called, back. Uh, crowdfundings. Seems like a lot of money. And you get two bankroll credits. Yeah, there you go. So we can't res this, which is unfortunate. Obviously we want to. That's some pop-up window with an eavesdrop. Oh my god. Oh my god. And I think they probably just run archives if they don't trash R&D, right? And the apocalypse us. I'm not serious. Yeah, okay. So now they see some really weird shit. Like, oh, I see what you're doing. Exploit? Luckily, our ice is super cheap. <laughs> I was like, oh, like Apocalypse Us, whatever. They derezzed. So that's technically two more credits for them, but also it's money that we lose. And then those comes down, which is the biggest issue. So I think we're going to have to put IP block onto uh, archives. We don't need to now. Oh, it's three ice. Excuse me. Whatever. We can be siphoned now, but we'll duck a bunch of it. Blueberry diesel, some filtration, gets them what they need, then bezels, what have you. But it's going to be a while before we have a remote that's pretty good. Economy is going to be the issue. We've drawn no raw economy cards besides one NGO. Oh, we had a daily quest. It lasted one turn. So I actually don't mind losing the second SSL. It'll give us the, the, the fuel we need. I think they'll probably have a lot of, they actually might have on, oh yes, we can res this, yes, 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 yes. Um, trace three, or trace five, my friend. That's still like six credits to get through. And we can put this where we need it. We don't need to do it now. We can still res HQIs. Feels good. Eavesdrop feels good. The Walkman of the future. They paid five? What's going on? And they got paid one more. All right. I'm assuming if they're on d res effects, they're not trashing ice, which would be good. There can't be any more agendas. We have all of them, give or take. Bankroll's an issue, mind you. They seem like they don't have a lot of money, but they definitely have eight credits there. Yeah, that makes sense. So no surprise there. Luckily, they can't afford to do it. But this card is, I think, super poisonous. I really don't like this card. Oh, because of bankrolling to derezzes for two? Okay. So guess who's clicking for credits? I honestly don't think that's good. The face check on this is so bad, it's not worth derezzing. Oh, that's really good. Okay. And we already gave them three credits, the one credit once with pad tap, so the SSL or the IPO, excuse me, didn't give them extra value. But this is only once a turn, so that's the idea. They're going to run once a turn, which makes sense because of both Angolo, both because of Los, and both the Rubicon switch. But our our most expensive ice is eight credits, and we're just never going to res that in this matchup. So again, if they need to get through this, it's two, four, five credits. This is they can always uh, lose a click. It's not that big of a punishment. And then we can do Ash. So I think we'll do Ash Heinlein. Oh, that's really expensive. And then our hands all eight agendas. But Galt are coming down for centuries, so that's the new sound. We have a double new sound. Um, that's kind of cool against Begalter. I think this actually does make the remote pretty secure. I'm not drawing second click. I'll feel like an ass. But I think they're running HQ here for sure. So well, I'm going to draw. That's 100% wrong. Should have planned our turn out. Because I don't want to jam another card because we have too many agendas. And if they put the Begalter down, it means they definitely want to run HQ. They also have no more MU. DJ Fender's coming down. Probably Reyna Roja, I imagine. Yeah. So not, it doesn't give them a link, but it gives them the ability to make our uh, the, the the res costs more expensive in their direction. Mind you, also, Hernando Cortez is online. And New Sound only has one subroutine. So this is going to cost four. And then they can de it, which is actually really slow. Oh, they have double pad tab. I didn't realize that. That's probably we gave them a fair bit of money. And then after that, I think we actually will jam an SSL. Oh, diversion. Well, yeah, this lets us res a lot of stuff. It's fine. 
So they get two credits back on this one. It's still three, four. So it's two credits and then this one's another four. We spend four for this one. We're gonna spend another three for this one, which sucks. That's gonna be a lot of our money. Having a current up here would have been a lot better. But we'll res this. It's just one more thing. The more we res, the more we play around both uh, Rubicon Switch and Reyna. I guess the less we play around exploit. At least they're not accessing. So yeah, we're down again. We just need better economy. Again, as Mari would have fired a bit. I would give them money too, though. All right, well, we got our ice up. Six credits to run HQ. We haven't seen a console yet either. Gauntlet doesn't make any sense with their deck. They're actually Rubicon switching here. I guess that makes sense. At least we have one up. Fuck off. Really? Literally any other draw on the deck. Literally any other draw. That sucks. If we click through, we just get siphoned. I think we feed this. Yeah, we didn't have enough agendas. We have one attitude adjustment. It would actually be pretty good. We'll get our money. The degree mails are relatively easy for them to stomach. So if we res this, we can't res that. We're just going to throw this one away. It's fine. Are there any left in R&D? Uh, yeah, there's two. Oh, wait, no. There's three and 29. Uh, oh, it's not sub. Yeah, it's not very obvious. Troll doesn't have subroutines. All good. Why can't you res Highland? Because then we don't have enough money to res IP block, which is better. No, of course. Of course not. The IP block is more annoying for them. It's going to cost them like five credits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming that they're going to... They fucked it up last time. They could lose the click here. Yeah, but they were spending four. They're overdoing it. Well, where's the IP block for two? And again, this res is one thing a turn. That's why I really don't like this card, right? Like if they have more money than us, which their economy is not very strong, but ours is actually really bad. You can just hold them down forever. Okay, now they're doing for the trace, which makes sense. So that saves them two credits. We could boost one here, but it's kind of the problem we have right now is not enough money, so we're not going to do it. Cool. I wonder if they trash the Highline grid. If they do, it's really good for us. I think if they do, it's going to be really hard for them to derez something. Best thing is when you get an SSL they want to steal and you don't even advance it. Feels good. Nine free credits for a click. <laughs> they got three points. They don't... Oh, did you access the Highline? I don't know if they did. It doesn't say they did. Oh, they're making a triple run again. Fuck. We're one crash short. Oh. Okay. So now they're going to bring out their three craft funding. And again, if we don't have money because they're deeper than our shit, we can't stop craft funding. So like, we're going to be clicking for a lot of credits. Yeah, That's not going to be a lot of fun. Trash the other quests, cool. It's harder for them to uh, Rubicon. Pad Tap's gonna give them two credits though. Again, I don't mind that they're running R&D. The worst part is the, obviously, is the crowdfunding is because there's like no agendas in there. 
And it looks like we're going to keep... They could, like, derez troll, but that's probably not worth their time. Oh, they are. They're derezing troll. That's so hateful. Why? <laughs> There's no way that's good. That's the real troll. Yeah, crowdfunding's coming back. Infinite money. What's the chance that we... Oh, toll booth? That's not going to be played. Uh, if we click for money, we can just lose it. What do we want? We want to just click for money, but we're going to lose it. So if we click for three, we'll be at four, five, six, seven. We res the new sound, that's three, so we're down at four, and then we can res the highland, so we can duck the siphon, so that's probably fine. This, this ash, this is totally unpalatable, the toll booth. We just need to get res ice on every central, and their money is drawing up, uh, drying up. The pad tap and the crowdfunding is obviously the, the majority of their econ engine, because they don't have a lot more money. But holy shit, are these things bad when they have crowdfunding? I guess that's not that bad. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is even more hateful. Okay, we're just not going to have money. Our economy is way too low to deal with all this d shit. Like, I think we're not going to be able to play the game in Neverrunner. Oh, let me move my face. Holy shit, these games take a while. It's 1130. We played two games! Xanadu, coming down. And corporate gain. Oh, now they have too little MU, so they're gonna undo something here. They just want to install something so we lose a credit. So we do have currents in a deck. They're really expensive though. I feel like this is an anti-synergy. Like these don't work well together. Like we're never gonna be above 10 credits. This fired once. Oh, actually twice. No, of course not. An Arc Lockdown for crowdfunding feels pretty good. It does, but like this deck can't use Arc Lockdown in any other matchup, so it's definitely not worth the slot. Okay, so we get a credit back. Oh, no, it didn't because it was not the first time. Yeah, this gives them two credits. It sucks. Oh, we have Hedge Fund. That's good. I just talked shit about Hernando Cortez, but here we are. Is this Hedge Fund still worth it? Likely. I think we want to jam the Quantum Kitty. Whatever. It's getting late. We just want to end this. Synergy is that Hernando gets them back down to poor status faster. Yeah, I see it. But like in theory, yeah, you want to play the game all the way at 14 credits. I think I'm wrong. Yeah, I think this does help. If they do get big, it puts them back down. Just like an IPO would have been gross there. We also don't have that bad face checks, which is an issue. Like this deck is really bad against face checks. So if we res this, it is a fair bit of credits. Um, I don't think I, we actually res this, but then they have a obviously a big chance of hitting the degree mill. So thinking if we res this, it's two plus two more plus one more. It's five to res a new sound. No, we're not going to do that. Whatever they can win right here. Oh yeah, they played a current. Oh, that was slightly better because they did play current, but it actually makes it one more cost because it has another current. So that's a degree mill, so they can run here beyond game point. Ooh, I just got a splinter. What are they going to shuffle is important. Uh, shuffling crowdfunding is kind of bad. The pad taps actually hurts their economy. I think you trap maybe even Hernando. Maybe one crowdfunding? I don't know. So what do they do? What do they shuffle? Oh, uh, Rizeki. So they're on game point. Their economy is slowing down a wee bit. This is going to give them two more credits if we take the money. And the QPM is not safe. Oh, actually, it's relatively safe. Ash is good. And this we rest for... has no subroutines. Take that, fucking Hernando. But we rest this for three. It's honestly not that bad for three. They generally call it pay for for it. After that, we just need to jam an NGO front. What was their first click? Draw. Okay. There's a Rizeki. We lose a credit. Looks like server one could be safe. And it looks like we're going to be just running for a lot of singles. Please, no agenda. 
Oh, that's really good. We want that. So this now makes exchange good, but exchange is in the bin and we have no way to tag them actively, but it turns off the current, which is bad for Newtown, but it's good for everything else. And now we want to make sure we keep crowdfunding out because they're going to run three times. So we want to make sure we can raise everything. I think we can. I think we have the money. And again, if we can keep them out of all the centrals, like they have no economy. Oh, this is fine. I think we'll start resing stuff here. Fucking cost five. Holy shit. Oh, that was a mistake. 100% we shouldn't have res this. That was 100% wrong because now they're going to run all these other servers and we want to res those more than HQ. Yeah, this is way wrong. Because three credits. Oh, we can't actually res Thimble Rig. So, no, no, it might not be the worst. We're going to be at zero credits, obviously, but we do have this. Still six credits for an access to get five. We can keep three, which is enough to rest Thimble Rig. Uh, even IP block here is pretty good. I feel like as a market, definitely would be better. We'd have more money. Again, pad tab though. Like if they kept one pad tab, I think that's not wrong. Rubicon, that's fine. So if we jam this on the remote, that's the only issue is like Ash is really bad. They didn't do a triple run. I think that's the only play we have. We could pre-res this for diversified. We know what current they're on, so they're not likely on interdiction. I don't know if they have slots for, uh, for uh, sorry, not diversified, for... um. The one that exposes. Because I think you should raise this, because with one credit, we're really not threatening an agenda here. Oh, they do have the current. <laughs> yeah, if our ice is better, it's, it's too cheap. I guess it's hard to resonate Nancy. I also forgot about Los's ability. Los's ability has been giving them so much money. I've totally been forgetting when we res this, we gave them two credits. That's also a big reason why resing this was wrong. Uh, okay, so it's a one and three for them to win here. They might be going for the exploit here. If we res this, we go to nine. All right, 33% chance. Oh yeah, they also, they did this in a, they didn't do that this turn, did they? Because they added a sub to it. One and three. Okay, IPO. Might be going for an exploit. They also might be going for a triple run here. So they might hit up R&D and archives. Technically Thimble Rig, I think is their best option. Create for a coming down. Class act, burst draw. They're technically poor right now. So we're not going to pop this on their turn. We want to pop on our turn so we can play IPO and they only get one pat up credit. Can't exploit since they paid the current. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> can we win? Yeah, it is. Okay, so we can pop this. We can do install advance events. We'd have six credits. Uh, server's not good enough. Thinking, is the server good enough? Their money is drawing up fairly, fairly hard. Now, I think we need to play the IPO. So that means we draw once. That's good. We could jam that, which is kind of bad. I think we just keep it. We'll just pop this. Could have won right there, obviously. Oh, actually, no, we have no money. What are we talking about? Might want to actually draw once more. So we don't end in four. Hernando back online. We only gave them one pad tap credit and they threw out another pad tap. Dirty laundry coming in. Going archives. Yeah, we'll definitely res this. <laughs> Page six. I'm glad we put all the cheap ice in this deck. It's still really annoying for them. Like they're breaking it for five. Oh, but the game too. <laughs> Whatever. 
Go ahead. Make my day. <laughs> I gotta think before I rise. I'm like, IP block, so good, so easy. Six. Christ. Again, I think Rubicon Switch is a really fucking toxic card. So tracing this, they can't really do. Oh wow, we're gonna get them. Oh, I totally forgot that we're gonna get them here. They're gonna lose the credits. They're gonna have a tag. All right, fantastic. Oh, this actually is better than I thought. I didn't even do the math. Uh, trace three, yeah. So it's three, so we're gonna spend our credits to make it five. So that keeps them out, gives them a tag. All that stuff is really good. I believe I once said Reza Chiashi for 17 credits, ouch. At least it's hard for them to de res it. That's the thing is Rubicon Switch is actually bad against big ice and it's bad it's good against cheap ice. Alright, so they have a tag. Uh I don't know if they want to de res this IP block. What is it? Sure gamble? Clear tag? I think they've used all their deuces for like tagging, yeah, for like value tag removal. They also haven't seen a console yet, which they definitely have one. Three credits. Ooh, hard hitting news could be a play here if we had it. And they're leaving our IP block up, which is, I think, the best thing. So I think we jammed the NGO front this turn. Undo, click. Oh, they have to throw something out. Maybe they just install like a pad tab or something. <sighs> Jeez, first, actually, yeah, it's another pad tab. That's going to pay out for them. It's better than credit. Oh, and we lose one. Yeah, it's much better than credit. So we could jam here in the remote. We'd go down to 765 credits. And uh, no, it's not gonna work. We need more credits. So they definitely have to run this. Yeah, just like a hard hitting news or something, maybe, I don't know. And then tag punishment. And then like a reasonable NBN deck. We gotta get these value. We gotta like C source with NBN. We gotta uh, <laughs> threat level alpha or some shit. All right, so we can protect all central servers. We're not going to pop this until we need to, just so we can play around Hernando. It's under res a troll for 10 credits. This one actually, at worst, is ever going to be three credits. Liberated account, wow. They ended their turn with no money? We could have won right there. Oh, fuck, we should have just pushed the degree mill. I'm so bad at this. I think we do. We know archive memories either, so like this is it's literally dead in there. So we pop this thing in two, and then we can do install advance advance, and then like it comes down to the math. I feel like we're okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. Could have had it last turn. And we also res like an ash before we res whatever ice to to play around Hernando. Double troll, yeah, but then we can't push. Double Troll is actually really good with um with this Highline Grid, which has been like the key, the crux of our deck. Oh, they actually have a fair bit of money. No, we're definitely gonna lose this. Yeah, we could have pushed last turn. Man, these look the same, huh? Why didn't we just put her the other way, right? Inside job. Okay, we gotta do a lot of leap math here. Okay, we res Ash. It's trace four. So this we res for three. They gain two. The trace technically matters. Oh, fuck. We have to do like a whole spreadsheet here. Okay, chat. <laughs> Help me with this if you can, kindly. So we res this for three. They gain two. So they're at 11. We're at seven. Okay, then they pass it. Then they hit the IP block. Now, if they want to break it, uh, then they'll have to break it as opposed to getting through for free. I think that's actually the biggest reason why we want to res this, so they have to deal with the IP block. On its own, it's trace three, but we can always boost. I feel like we have to res this, just so that they have to deal with this, because this is three credits, as opposed to nothing. Yeah, I feel like we do. If they lose a click here, we can just boost into Ash real hard. YOLO. I didn't do the math. This feels intuitively correct. The lowest credits make it difficult. Oh yeah, we have to fire it. Uh, do we spend our clicks on it? Yeah, I think we do. 
We only need to end our turn with three credits. We just gotta make sure for that. Don't we res Ash first? Uh, I don't know if they know it's Ash. We would have saved one credit. Yeah, you're right. We probably should have res Ash first. Yeah, 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 I think you're right. Oh, they actually spent four. Oh, that's really good for us. I think we've now won. If it comes down to one credit, yeah. Oh, yeah, fuck, it doesn't fire. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, that should have inside job. <laughs> yeah, totally. We got carried away. That's my bad. I initiated it. It's on me. My bad. All right. Round two. It's in the temp zone. Do we raise the ash this time? I feel like I've learned something here. They must know it's an ash, right? It also saves our credits. Yeah, I feel like having an extra credit is more valuable. Let's do that. Wait, why three? No. There you go. Oh, it is three. No, that's right. Yeah, troll has zero subs. We fucked this up. Why are we prioritizing Ash? Chat! Ah, fuck me. I goofed that. Yeah, my bad. How's it going, Plywood? Okay, now they can do perfect math, so we lost. There's no surprise. I guess it changes whether or not they res this or not. It doesn't play around Hernando because this has no subroutines. Uh, this you have to deal with. <laughs> Lol, my bad. It's all good. I believed you. Oh, this is going to be really awkward. Cool. Yep. Oh, wait. They can't run it again. Maybe we are fine. Are we fine? So they have six. There's no on successful run credits. Oh wait, this is actually perfect, isn't it? Can they run back is a problem. So they've already like used their IP block. They can't lose a click. So this is legitimately trace two and then trace three, which isn't a lot. They don't even trash Ash. Okay, so if they don't win off of R&D, we win. You could trash. Oh, you can. I don't know which Ash art I like better. I feel like the problem with this one is I only have one of it. God, I can't believe the server was so good. Again, specifically Angolo. They should have traced through this IP block and I think they would have won. The fact that they spent five on it, huge mistake. One credit? No, nah, it's two credits because we could click for one. Like we only need three credits, so they're two credits off. Make run R and D. So if we res this, we can't score. All right. <laughs> if we lose to R and D here, my fucking god. Please don't lose R and D. Oh fuck! <laughs> oh god damn it! Damn it. <laughs> Oh, uh, seriously? We literally threw every agenda. There's like two agendas in there. Oh, no. Oh, there's three agendas in there. Excuse me. 
How long was that game? I closed the stats. Oh my god, we had four agendas in hand for so long. Um, no. All right, well, that was at least somewhat poetic. Uh, fuck. Hey, cheers. Uh, Slimmy Robot, it's 11.45 where I'm at heading to bed. Another time, though. Uh, fuck me. 3 and 20. Not the worst odds. Uh, we couldn't have res this. Uh, it, in theory, the tag might have mattered because of Quantum Kitty, which have been cute, the one of, but like then we can't score this. So one credit. Not even one credit. Oh, we're so good in that runner. Oh, we worked so hard! Turn two hit four agendas in hand and we almost pulled it off. Oh, fuck. I had a Maui in there? Oh, it makes sense. Never got it. Maui's for running HQ? Yeah. I don't even think it would have been that good. But yeah, fuck me. This card. <laughs> Next game. Yeah, it was a 40 minute game. How's it going to double? That makes sense. We played two games between like 10 30 and now. Okay, well, whatever. This deck does something. We can definitely tune the deck. Like, it's doing two things. Like, the troll Heinlein grid is one thing for sure. And then the other uh, thing is the, the, the thing that didn't fire that game. But man, no, <laughs> that's wonderful. Glad you enjoyed it at least. Fuck! Oh, we worked so hard. We did all this advanced math. Advanced math might be overselling it. But hey, it's 11.45. I can't believe two games took us so long. We still have a cool list of decks to, to burn through. Um, I think there's something here. We just obviously have to uh, to, to fine-tune it. I don't know where the, the deck is on the channel itself, but if you want to check out, maybe you haven't seen this, there is a video where we build a Mati deck, which isn't legal anymore, I'm totally aware, that runs um, uh, that, that combo, and it is incredibly strong um it was incredibly strong i just don't know where it is so that sucks who titles all these things anyways oh i think it's this one did i find it is it the one that's like cut into three parts yeah it's definitely this one so if you want to check it out is it this one yeah i think it is this one yeah, this is probably yeah, a Mati decklist with Thimble Rig and the other thing. And Eavesdrop, yeah. So if you want to check it out, it's broken up into three parts, but uh, the games are really fun. And we saw like uh, Eavesdrop on uh, Thimble Rig with like five, six eyes. It's pretty great. Troll Highline Grid did fire. Did I mess up? No, it didn't fire once. Troll was good though. I think Troll he res multiple times for multiple credits, but almost every time people paid for the, the cost, which is pretty cool. Um, Enigma also would have been bad, so we won that one. Anywho. That's all from me. We'll be back next week. I have to ask Pat, but Pat, in theory, should be around next week. Uh, it's generally scheduled, so we'll do some fun stuff for sure. Thanks so much for watching uh, either live or the VOD. Thanks so much to all the people we played games with. Everybody participating in democracy. That's really important. I'm glad uh, you could get your, your vote in there. Uh, we'll be around next week. Uh, good luck for all the people that have regionals this weekend. or uh, I think it's regionals right now that are starting, right? So good luck with all that stuff. Let me know how that all goes, and we'll be back. Ciao.